and for better mm -hmm. webinar quality, just turn your camera. <laughs> Okay, everyone. So um, we'll begin now. Uh, Mr. Zaid, is that okay? Yeah, you can go on. Okay, allow me to introduce you first. So everyone, welcome to uh, another ADEC webinar, this time on simplified e-learning content. And this particular webinar is actually a series of two webinars. No. So we'll be having today's webinar now, of course, obviously, and we'll be having another tomorrow. So the one today will be about simplified e-learning content design. And the second webinar tomorrow, so you can see some of the here. The second webinar tomorrow will be at the same time via the same link, and it's simplified e-learning content development using PowerPoint. So as I'm speaking, I'm changing my slides, but I do realize there might be a bit of a lag. Um, so I think you can probably see the slides that I was mentioning just now. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are very, very fortunate, very lucky to have Mr. Zaid Ali al -Saigaf. He is an icon and a pioneer in e-learning in the higher education landscape in Malaysia. He's uh, very well known, he's won many awards and he is also invited all over the place to give lots of talks uh, and sharings about his knowledge on e-learning. So. Today, uh, Mr. Zai will be sharing with us simplified e-learning content. So I always have problems trying to create my PowerPoint presentation. So I really want to know how I can actually simplify my e-learning content. So Mr. Zai, if you are ready, I will pass the mic to you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Adek and University of Malaya for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Amira and Azrul for making this happen. But first, I would like to uh, I would like to mention. Ahmad Saufi bin Abdul Rahman, if you can mute your mic, uh, that will help a lot. Because uh, I think uh, Ahmad Saufi bin Abdul ah, okay, thanks. Because <laughs> if the mic is on, it becomes uh, very difficult. Uh, so thank you very much. This happens. But I think the first thing we have to realize with webinars, uh, usually the first time you do it, it doesn't always go so well. So don't panic. The most important is not to panic. And I think University of Malaya has a good support team. So anything goes wrong, they can always, they're always there to help you in some way. Okay. Okay, so my topic today is simplified e-learning content design. Okay, I have been in this field, alhamdulillah, I've been in this field about uh, 20 years in e-learning. So I've had my ups and downs. Uh, so I'm going to share with you now the basic, the very basic. So I'm going to uh, basically focus on two things. I'm going to focus on, today is about design, and I'm going to focus specifically on content. I think that's an area where a lot of people are doing a lot of uh, webinars on hundreds of tools and so on. But I just want to focus on instructional design today. Uh, and then tomorrow, we're going to focus on development. Uh, and I'm going to focus on one tool only, specifically, and that is PowerPoint. Because PowerPoint, there are a lot of the hundreds of tools. I've taught thousands of t educators, hundreds of tools. But at the end of the day, one tool that most people are using is PowerPoint. And that tool itself can do quite a lot. So I want to focus really much on that tomorrow. But today is about design. Huh? So I want to ask you a question. Uh, what annoys you most about PowerPoint or people that present using PowerPoint? To answer that question, uh, I've set up a slido.com. Huh? So if you can go to slido.com, the, the number is there. The password is 84602. You just go to slido.com slido and then uh, hashtag eight. Oh, you don't need to write hashtag. Just write to write eight four six zero two, and then answer the question. What annoys you most when people present using PowerPoint or Keynote? Any, I mean, when they present, what are the things? And these are some items that very comes up very commonly. What are the things that annoys you most? Huh? You can add actually more than one. I think I've said more, but you can just select the ones that really annoy you when people present. This really annoys you because you need to know this if you're going to go into e-learning you need to know this okay let's just uh, so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to change i'm going to hide i'm going to stop sharing and i'm going to share the screen huh? sorry i'm going to go back here i'm going to share again and i'm going to go window and i'm going to go here so i'm going to share this so the idea is to see what's happening so these are the results are you seeing the results but well, if you're seeing it here anyway so what annoys you most about people when they present using PowerPoint or just present in a lecture or in a class? I think here in university is mostly lectures. What are the things that annoys you most? 
it's good to know because these are the things you want to avoid especially when you go online you want to pre prepare good content and activities these are especially content but today actually, mo these two days we're going to focus mostly on content you can see here the percentages are going up and down So as you see, full sentence instead of bullet points, okay? And this is a very common, I've been a judge for quite a few conferences, and this is a common mistake, especially when you prepare, prepare I mean, present research papers, is that you show paragraphs and so on. Okay, the speaker read the slides to us. I think this is, if you ask students, and I've asked other places, this is the one that comes up most. The speaker read the slides to us. I mean, if you're going to quote from this, Slides is okay, but if you're going to actually just read out the slides, what's the point, right? And another one is, of course, the text so small I couldn't read it. This is not so important for online learning because as long as the text is visible in a mobile phone, it's okay. But especially when you present in big conferences, your text needs to be bigger so it allows everyone in the conference hall to see it. Huh? Overly complex diagrams. Yeah, how can we, sim especially if you're doing your PhD and so on, probably sometimes your, compl your diagram becomes so complex, it might impress your supervisor, but maybe not is understandable to the rest of the world. Uh, your color choice is very important. The flow ideas is very important and no clear purpose, okay? So this thing is not so important. There's no clear purpose. Is the least, I mean, of the, of the items here. If you ask corporate, uh, the, the purpose will be very high. It'll be probably the second highest, huh? Okay. So we've got 35 respondents. Uh, I'm going to go back to my uh, uh, slides again. I'm gonna actually take a print screen, huh? So we can see here, so we can get back to the slides. Huh? So this is uh, of the respondents that participated, or 36, okay, let's go back here. Uh, okay, let's do presenter full mode. I just wanna get a screenshot, I'll put it in the slides. Okay, we've got 36 respondents, I'll take the print screen. I'm gonna unshare now, sorry, I'm gonna stop sharing again. And I'm gonna go back to presenting my slides. Where's my slides? Huh? Hey. Oh. Wait, sorry. And please use the chat box. Uh, I'll make the slide available for questions there. For, so people that cannot access the chat in the presentation can actually ask me questions through Slido. I'll make that available soon. But let me just get the, I need to share. Okay, sorry. Ah, there, okay, I'm gonna share. You should be seeing my slides in less than three seconds. So this is, let me just add the slide. So this is what we got, huh? okay. So this is what we got. Before I move on, I just want to ask you, what do you think about the results until now in the in the forum? What do you think about the results? Huh? Okay, so Prof Karim is here. He said, welcome Prof Karim. Thank you for coming so early. I didn't expect you to come from the beginning. Uh, Jerry Chong is here. Uh, thank you for sharing with you. So if you notice, just look at the results. Huh? This is the results from today. We had 36 that actually participated in the, the, the poll. The number one thing is the speaker, like what I'm doing now, the speaker read the slides to us. So if you're gonna, if you do this in classroom, you're only, you're gonna make a fool of yourself only in the classroom. But if you do this online, it's just, it's not gonna help the students, because students can, most, I think nine, should be not 100% can read. So if you're just gonna read the slides, don't add audio to your slides. You might as well just give them a, as a PDF file or as a Word uh, PowerPoint file. If you're gonna add more, you're gonna enhance it, you're gonna explain it more details, you're gonna simplify it, then you use audio narration. I think that's very important to know when to use audio narration. And other ones are full censored. So what I'm gonna do now, this is what we found in this group. Huh? Let's just look at some other research. I asked this question a few weeks back in the, I have a learning innovation circle which has about 2,000 plus, uh, but not many people participate. I think about 57 actually participated, or 56 here, yeah? 53 plus 3 is 36. And the same thing, see, the same thing they got. The reader, uh, the speaker, read the slides to us, then full censored. It's quite similar to what we found here. Yeah, you can see it, quite similar, right? The first two are the same, okay? The first three are the same, and then over complaint parts. It's basically the same. I asked in 2018, I asked the Learning Innovation Circle in 2018, in November, and we got at least the first two the same. The speaker read the slide to us and full, sten full sentences instead of bullet points. So these two things we really need to keep away from if you're gonna make our e-learning content um, 
impactful and also not annoy people. And when you ask the corporate, I asked the corporate network, you can see here, and they had the same. Everyone is the same, the speaker, but they had no clear purpose because when you're doing corporate, it's all about ROI and so on. They do not want to see a presentation that has no purpose. So if you're an academic and you're pre presenting to the corporate world, make sure you have a purpose. The purpose comes out in your presentation. Okay. This qu these questions or these uh, options I got from a survey done in 2009, uh, 13 and before. And you can see here the the answers is, again, the speaker read the slides to us, 72% doesn't like it. Text so small can read it, full sense. So instead, it comes up again and again. It's the same couple of th top three things that is so important. Huh? Okay. So when you're presenting, huh, please keep this away. Huh? <laughs> do not speak to the whiteboard or do not speak to the slides. Or, I mean, just read out the slides. Very important. Okay. Are we okay so far? Okay, I can see that actually 85 people in the chat also. Wow. Okay, I don't know how many outside. So are we far? Are we good so far? Or so far good? <laughs> okay, great, great. Like... Okay, I didn't ask you. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh, that hurt. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, okay, so Prof. Karma said if the audience is highly motivated, they will still read the slide full of text, but in general, less text, please. Yeah. I, of course, this is very important. There's something called design, and there's something what student wants. From my experience of helping people design content for nearly 20 years, is students always want slides with as much content as possible, because that allows them not to go elsewhere. So they want to get everything in the slides as much as possible. That's what they want. But in terms of simplifying, in terms of instructional design, in, in terms of students understanding, in terms of aha moments, and especially if you're going to present not just students, you're going to present out there, you have to simplify and 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 and, and zoom into what's important in your slides. And because if you if everything is in your slides, why are you using audio narration in the first place? Your audio narration is supposed to complement and empower and enhance what you are saying. Okay, so you can see here in webinar one, we're going to look at learning instructional design and look a bit about copyright and creative commons we have prof karim here i don't know if he'll be around until the end but he will he's especially strong in corporate corporate uh, copyright and also creative commons and also open education resources which i cover a bit that's webinar one so today we're going to look at that we're going to really understand and we're going to look at to the level most of my insights doesn't come from just academic because it also comes from ted talks and so many places infused there to, to design really exceptional content huh? And then the second webinar, we're going to actually focus on one tool. There are many tools out there, but from my experience, is the one tool, besides maybe Kahoot, that's used by 80 to 90% of academics is PowerPoint. So we're going to actually look at how we can actually design awesome content in PowerPoint. As you see here, I'm going to show you something very interesting. Yeah? You see my pointer here? This drawing here is not done in PowerPoint. Now. This, is a, this is I've drawn myself. So that's one of the things I teach people how to draw, that you can empower your own content. So I will cover that in the digital drawing number eight here. But that will be very interesting. But that's something I really passionate about training academics how to draw. Because if you can draw and you can illustrate, creating content becomes one of the easiest things you can imagine. Uh, but if you cannot draw, you cannot illustrate, content development, especially visualization of content, becomes a big challenge. Although you have a lot of free tools and so on. But when it comes to complex content, whether it's biology, engineering, uh, uh, medical and so on. Using all these free tools uh, is going to help you do all the fluff. But when it comes to so sophisticated content, complex content, deep into the content, you have to find ways to be able to your own to visualize it because the tools are not going to help you that much. Okay, so we're going to look at learning. Okay. Okay. So any questions until now? When I look, start looking at learning. <laughs> Okay, Abdul Karim says, uh, I joined today because I thought I'll be presenting in BM. I'm not presenting in BM. <laughs> okay. Sorry, there's actually a lot of people WhatsApping me. The, the, the URL was a bit messed up in the beginning. Jerry Chong said, on that note, what I am having, uh, I'm having a live class, use a separate presentation slide for lecture, mainly for Zooming in focus group, while the students have the PowerPoint slide with the full content. Is that advisable? Or should it always be the same version for both? Uh, Jerry Chong, yeah, it's a good point. Actually, uh, some people, what they do is they have the presentation slides, and then they have something called reading slides, okay? What you can do is, if you want to have both in one, 
if you sh if if you don't share the PDF file, if you just share the PowerPoint, we're talking about PowerPoint today, but I'm just answering your question in case you don't come tomorrow. Is that you have something called in PowerPoint add notes, right? Let me just show you. I can show you now. Huh? What is that? Uh, you see here. You have here. Click add notes. You can actually add all the additional content here. But if you share it as a PDF file, it might be an issue. But if you share it as a PowerPoint file. The students have all the additional content in the ad notes, and then you have it summarized. Because students that struggle with the subject, if you give them full-blown notes in the slide, they might have problem extracting the essence, the key concepts, and so on. But if you visualize it in your slides and you add all your additional content here, blah 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 blah, it's okay. 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 Sorry, I just have to. This apparently I shouldn't have shared it on WhatsApp. That was my biggest mistake. Because uh, they have the ro broken URL. Okay, let's go back to here. Okay, so Jerry Chong, so you you have made a very good point because we want to please the students, but also we must think about if I think most of you here today are university lecturers, and I have had a problem with this for fifteen years, because when I went to uni, I went to uni in Malaysia also. I did my bachelor's and master's. And then I didn't go further. So, <laughs> but when I did my bachelor's, one of the things I noticed was actually very stressful, very fantastic. We didn't get at that time. This was in 1996. We didn't get all these uh, slides and so on. We just got list of chapters to read. So every topic we got like five, and we had to read and we had to summarize it. That skill is being killed actually. Uh, although I'm going to share with you how to develop nice content tomorrow, but that process is actually being ruined in this current generation of students because they're so they're so used to being spoon fed. Uh, and they just cannot, I mean, they, they, if, beyond Google, they cannot find content. But I remember last time what we used to do, and I think uh, many of you did also, is that you just got a list of chapters. Like one topic, you had five chapters, and you had to read it. You have to make your own notes, and then you listen to your lecture, you create on the. Actually, that process, the, the process of, that's one of the things I teach is creating your own notes. Huh? That part of the brain development is so important because that ability to take notes is so central when the students graduate. That's the one of the most important skill is the ability to to to, to curate your own information, summarize it, and synthesize it. But that skill is less and less being nurtured in students, where students are being basically spoon-fed with a full-blown PowerPoint, full-blown concept. We're helping the students for the exam, but we're not helping the students for life and for work and so on. I think this is one of the challenges as an academic you have because you need to worry about performance evaluation and you need to worry about pleasing the students and all put together. Sometimes you, you do what's right for the exam, but you're not necessarily doing what's right for the student in the future. I think these are some of the really challenging things that we need to, to think about. Okay, going back to that. So now we're going to talk about learning. Eh? So I think people have seen this. We have worse memory and worse memory than goldfish and so on eight second I'm not so much into that but what is happening today which is very important is we're moving from a culture of deep attention to hyper attention and these are some of the issues that we need to deal with uh, the students attention today attention span is probably even our attention span because we're using social media we're getting instant gratification through games even when you want to watch a, a movie or a series, I used to watch Dallas, Dynasty, and so on. We had to wait a week for another episode. Now they watch the whole series over one night or over two days. You know, they, they, they can get what they want whenever they want. So this this is, 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 is they're lucky in that sense. But when they learn, they if they're not interested in what you teach, they don't pay attention. If they don't pay attention, it's going to impact the, the effectiveness of the learning. And that's one of the things I'm going to focus on today is you need to gain the student's attention. Okay. So there's something called the 10 minute rule. Uh, okay. And I want to ask you now while we're here, how many of you heard about the 10 minute rule? Okay. I'm back at the chat now. I see Shamsuddin Abdullah. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a doctor or professor. I'm not sure what you are. On the other hand, uh, you said students would have the trimmed version of the slides and then the detailed elaboration to discuss in class. Therefore, students need to write notes, class. How about this? I think this is great. I think we should not spoon feed the students with everything. At university level, that's a crime to me because you're, you're depriving them of the ability to synthesize and capture information and take notes and so on, which is so important. Okay. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, Mr. Zayed, can you please share your screen? And can I request um, uh, somebody named Alok Mishra to stop presenting? Oh, somebody's presenting. <laughs> it's probably an accident. <laughs> That's okay. 
Google Hangout is uh, like Google. It's very democratic in the sense that a bit chaotic. <laughs> Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Let me just go back. I can share again, no problem. Great, uh, okay, share now. Very interesting. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Let's go back here. Yeah. Okay. Are you Are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> I see uh, somebody sleeping there. <laughs> Sorry to say. So I see somebody sleeping watching me. That's very interesting. Okay. Uh, do you see my slides now, uh, Doctor Amira? Okay, your slides are back on now. Not yet in the streaming link, but they're on in the meet link. So you're good to go. Okay. Okay, I'm good to go. I just one more thing I want to do now is I'm going to... No, no. I have actually... Uh, for those uh, that want to uh, ask questions, I've also opened up a question in Slido because I, 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 I'm not sure how many is actually in the stream. I have no idea. But if you're in the stream... Huh, let me just uh, share the slide again. Huh? If you're in the stream and you want to ask questions, uh, you have here, let's go back here. You have this one, huh? very important. Uh, yeah, sorry. Okay. You can, uh, let's go back here, very important. Okay. For those who have questions that can cannot ask questions in the, because only University of Malaya and Prof. Karim <laughs> can ask questions in the, the, the Google Meet itself. If you have any questions, you can actually ask slido.com and then you put in this password, okay? So, Prof. Uh, Dr. Amira, please, can you manage, just look at that, keep an eye on that one? Yeah, sure, I've got my eye on Slido. Uh, so if any questions you can ask, okay. Let me just go there, wait. Okay, so I'll, I'll be here, I'll have it here, I have another iPad open here, so. So this is the fun part, okay, let's go back to where we are. We are here, okay. There is something called uh, that, 10 minute rule. How many of you heard about the 10 minute rule? Okay. Anybody knows anything about the 10 minute rule? No. No, okay, Dr. Amir. You, hey, you have attended my workshop before. I always cover the 10 minute rule in all my workshops. Okay. Okay, so John Medina, I've, I've covered this this slide. I, of course, I've, I've improved it. I've done this slide at least 15 years, I think, no, not 50, I mean, nearly 50, 10 years, at least 10 years. So John Medina, when he did research, what he found that is, if I were to give a lecture today, the most people can focus with the, basically, he scans the brain, he's a brain scientist. So basically, you can see here, your attention, uh, let me just put the pointer. Uh, you, see. you see here, after 10 minutes, it slowly goes, but gets worse. So 10 minutes is like the, it's the golden rule, according to him. If you're even if you're doing a lecture, you need to engage the students beyond you just talking. So if say that if you follow the 10-minute rule, if for a 45-minute lecture, you need to at least have four activities, three to four activities in your 45-minute lecture to keep them fully engaged throughout. Huh? So you have to do things, otherwise it will just dip and then people start falling asleep and so on. Of course, people sometimes fall asleep within two, three minutes, but in general, it's the 10-minute rule. Now, when we talk about online, huh? When we talk about online, it's actually even, le I mean, if you talk for 10 minutes online in the live webinar without engaging at all the audience, I think it's going to be quite a, a sleepy event unless you're an exceptional speaker. So, so it's very important to engage the students. So I, actually, I read the research. I think Prof. Karim can share from his own YouTube channel. The threshold, especially if you have videos, the threshold where people actually switch off is four minutes, three to four minutes. They did a, 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 a heavy study on massive open online courses, and they found that people would start switching off the video if you, where you're talking for four minutes, and anything more than that, people already start switching off. So that's the threshold. But if you're boring, after five seconds, they might switch off. But in general, the threshold is about four minutes. So online is maybe about four to five minutes. That's why we talk about, we'll talk about later micro learning and so on. Keep your videos very short. I uh, don't have to keep it 40 minutes, 30 minutes. It lets you break up, chunk it up and so on, okay? So these are some of the things to keep in mind. Uh, according to uh, John Medina, he has 10 rules, uh, 10 brain rules that you can keep in mind. I'm just gonna cover them uh, quite uh, nicely and quickly. Attention, okay? We don't pay attention to boring things. And I think this is very important. Uh, lectures sometimes get angry when I mention this. They say we're not entertainers. But I'm said, but you're also not there to bore them and put them to sleep. So you have to find this balance. There's something called edu 
edutainment, not entertainment, mm -hmm. edutainment. So you have to find ways to make things interesting. Okay, it's not easy, but that's one of the skills I think of today's lectures. To be successful, you have to make try to make things interesting. Uh, every brain is every brain is wired differently. Fine. That's one of the things I noticed. You might have a uh, this semester you think you're the most amazing lecturer. You had a good group of students that fit your kind of personality, and then the next semester you realize oh, I'm not so good after all. Maybe you had a very bad group that didn't match your kind of teaching style and so on. So this is one of the challenges with teaching is that there's is, there's no silver bullet here. Male and female are different. I don't want to go into that, but you can see that. I think one of the challenges in Malaysian universities and all over the world is the, the balance is the ladies. I think in Malaysia, I don't know, maybe you can correct me, Dr. Amira. How much is it? 65% ladies in the universities now compared to men? Uh, yeah, I think it's about yeah. that. So I think this is one of the biggest challenges that the Minister of Education should do. Okay, we have this challenge. Is this good or bad? I think it's not good. I, I'm happy that a lot of women are, or ladies and uh, are, are in the universities, but I think we need to get more gentlemen into the universities. And to do that, we need to figure out how the brain, not the brain, but how men mix, mix the university more relevant or interesting to the, the way the, the, the male learns and the interests and so on. I think that's a big challenge. We have to do, because unless you want to make universities irrelevant, we have to figure out to get more males, men, into the field of education and studying and so on. Uh, repeat to remember, remember to repeat, okay? So may, may I wanted to ask you, what's the difference between repeat to remember and remember to repeat? Can anyone? What's the difference? Okay, let's see the chat. Okay. Okay, Jerry Chong says repetition is key, okay. But repeat to remember, remember to repeat. This this is this is why am I mentioning it in, in both angles, okay? Okay. There is something called spaced repetition, which is one of the most powerful tools to remember anything. It's actually the most powerful tool. For example, repeat, let's just go back to the slider, uh, okay, Remem repeat to remember. In other words, when you repeat to remember, like they found out like medical words, there was a research done, how many times a student needs to repeat a medical word until it becomes long-term memory. And they found it was about seven times. They have to repeat it seven times. Now, I could repeat it now in one go seven times. Will I remember it forever? No, most likely. In other words, remember to repeat, in other words, is spaced repetition. Is that I, re I, I, re I cover it today, I think I know it, I check it out tomorrow, I realize I don't know it, I repeat it again, and there are some formulas. There's one formula, very easy formula, is straight after the lecture, one day after, one week after, and then uh, maybe one month or three weeks after. There's different formulas, but you need to repeat it over several days to make it really long-term memory, usually. The start, you need to understand, of course, but I'm talking about in terms of being able to recall it. Huh? So that's very important. Okay. And then the next one is we need to use uh, stimulate more senses, and that's where multimedia comes in uh, and visuals come in. I, I think it's very difficult to deal with our smell, but our smell is actually has extremely powerful memory. But smell, I'm not sure whether we can do online. We can do imaginary smell, but not smell itself. Vision trumps, this is not Donald Trump, huh? vision trumps, okay, it's not Trump, huh? vision trumps all other senses. So visual is so important. That's one of the reasons that I started drawing three years ago, one of the reasons, and teach people how to visualize their content. Because people remember, people don't remember in words, people remember in pictures, images. So if you can convert any text into an image that's understandable to a, a learner, it becomes so much more powerful, okay? And that's I, because I, I, I'm sharing this because I also teach learning skills. So I teach some of the most powerful techniques in improving your memory, which I re relate to instructional designer. Stress brains don't learn the same way. So we don't, we want to find ways to make this, the life of the students less stressful. And there's something called de-stress and there's something called eustress, okay? So we like to focus on converting de-stress into eustress. And eustress is, it's stressful, but it's fun. Like, uh, I think you've heard about, uh, Prof. Kari, if you're still here, maybe you want to share the link. In. Tools like, i just given a tool that everybody knows. Kahoot is a tool that's basically a quiz if you do a normal quiz, you might get stressed, but Kahoot has made gamified and make into a game, game-like experience that makes it less stressful, it's fun, 
At the same time, you're actually having a bit of stress because you need, you're trying to answer correctly. So that is you stress, like jumping off a, uh, uh, like bungee jumping. Like you want to try some, it makes it, it's stressful, but at the same time, it's not suck it. You don't feel like vomiting or anything. You're having fun with it. But de-stress is like when you sit for an exam and so on, can be very stressful, okay? We need to sleep more, okay? That one I don't. The exercise is actually, one of the things I always teach students is the most powerful, easiest tool to improve your memory, and students need good memory in, in universities, definitely, right, is to exercise. There's no other tool that's more powerful to improve your memory and your focus than exercise. Uh, so when I when I sit with students, say, when I look at students and say, oh, I got poor memory, I look at, do you exercise or not? Because that's one of the easiest ways to improve your memory and focus is to exercise. Okay? And music can play a role. I don't want to focus too much, but music can play a role. And exploration. You want people don't like sometimes to be taught. We like to learn. We like to explore. So if the academic or the teaching or the approach can empower people to be, it's more explorative. It's more uh, interrogation. It's more fun. You're, you, instead of just being spoon fed, you actually try to find it yourself. You're trying to explore it yourself, like an adventure, uh, exploration. So these are some of the things that he found to empower the brain to be more active in the learning process. Okay. Okay. So any questions? Uh, until now regarding that okay we have some more uh we have uh, rabba i don't know if she's dr rabba rasak thank you for coming uh, uh she's from uh, uitm uh and then and prof karim says that participation in this webinar is a good example of you stress <laughs> i don't know how i can relate that to you stress but anyway okay you stress is good stress okay so marcila binti muhammad uh, Isa from IPG KPP uh, says that. And Tamara Bossia, uh, what you remember after you forgot that stays on. Betul. Okay. And Prof Karim said, repeat to remember is related to Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. Check it out. Yeah, you can check out Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. I used to have it in my slides, but there's just too many things to put into the slides, but it's important to know. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Ilhami Abdul Ghani Azmi, ask questions. Huh? Very important. I, I don't know if you're asking me a question or your, the importance of asking questions. Okay. Okay. So we see that. Okay. So another thing which is super important is this. Comparison versus progress. When we talk about learning is this is human nature. We always compare, compare. Okay. But I think what we need to teach students, because a lot of people are passionate about something, but then they start, I give you an example, Prof Karim, if you're still here, Prof Karim used to, I bring up in his example, Prof Karim used to like drawing, okay? He used to love drawing when he was young, but suddenly he stopped, okay? So what was the reason he stopped? According to him, he told me, he stopped because his friend was better at him, better than him, so he allowed his friend to draw, and then he will write the script for the drawings. But I'm not sure whether he liked it, but if you like something, and you think you can enjoy it, and create value from it. Even if somebody's better you, don't co focus on comparison. Always focus on progress. Okay, there's somebody here making noise. Wait, I just need to find out who's making noise. Uh, can uh, Dr. Amir, can you find the person that's making noise? <laughs> or maybe it. it uh... <laughs> okay, I sit here. So it's very important. Huh, this comparison versus progress. Comparison is normal. We can't run away from it. But I always advise academics and students, focus on your progress. Like for academics, you might see some t academics are better than you than e-learning and so on. But it doesn't matter. Are you making progress? Because some people are slow learners. Some people are fast learners. And it doesn't mean because you're a slow learner that you will not be successful or you will not do well. Actually, if there's some research. I don't have it here in my slides. There has some research, slow learners that actually keep on progressing, they're actually sometimes much more successful than fast learners. They call it slow thinkers and fast thinkers. But slow learners sometimes need more time to get to it. And and Khan Academy, if you're familiar with Khan Academy, they actually have some research on that. They found studying maths, I just think relating to maths. Maths found that some people are very fast to learn the basics thing in maths, but then their progress is slow after a while. But some people are really slow learners, but when they start getting a bit of progress, they start leaping and they go beyond the, the, the fast learners. Uh, so this so that's why we should always encourage, even students are slower, it doesn't mean they are low in IQ, it doesn't mean anything, it just means some of the students need more time to figure out what they're learning. I think that's something that has to be infused more in e-learning, and we just call, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, personalized learning and so on. 
Okay, okay, I'm not going to focus much on this, but of course we need to have growth mindset and growth mindset basically says if we can infuse this in ourselves when we're doing <laughs> online education and in students that no matter how bad you are, it's not about you, it's about what you're doing. So in other words, I'll keep on pushing myself there and always, there's always some way to do it better. So like if I do a webinar today and it crashes, should I never do a webinar in my life again? Maybe it's just one little tweak I need to do and I can do my webinar. So don't be discouraged of or messing up and that's what basically is growth mindset and that's how you get the mindset to mastery and you can see that this is just a illustrative diagram uh, which I found years ago which I found so amazing that explains that you don't want to have an anatomy you don't have a dropout mindset you want to have a they call it expert mindset that always keep on pushing yourself okay so that's basically things I want to cover in learning before I go into instructional design but before I do that we have a nice chat here uh, and we have a chat also in the okay there's one question been asked on the Slido. How to insert voice already prepared, provided slides from the publisher? How to insert voice in already prepared? Okay, please, okay, this is questions about PowerPoint. We're gonna discuss this tomorrow. But if you have, and to put it short, if you have slides, you can always add audio in PowerPoint itself, okay? And if it's, if you cannot access in slide, people. PowerPoint format, then it's another issue. But we'll discuss that tomorrow. Anything regarding slides, we discuss it tomorrow. If you cannot come tomorrow, you can watch the recording. Because if I go into that, it'll, it'll take so much too much time. But it's a good question, very good question. Okay. And uh, there's Prof. Karim. He's confirming. Yes, my friend was better than me in drawing, so we worked together. I made the script, and he drove the pictures. We sold the comic and shared the profit, which is great. But my issue with that is not nothing with that. It's just that I feel that if you had drawn since you were a kid, you would be an exceptional drawer today. And it might have fulfilled the thing that I'm not sure what you have inside. A lot of people have things they wanted to do, but they stopped doing because someone else was better than them. And if they had actually gone on, they would have been very successful. Okay. Uh, and Jerry Chong basically said, true customizing it to your uh, customizing it to your audience. Uh, train. Okay, true. And then Prof. Karim says, I still love graphics. Yes, Prof. Karim, actually, Prof. Karim is an exceptional visualizer designing slides and presentations and visuals, taking pictures is exceptional photographer. But my challenge to you is that I want to see you visualize from the scratch. If you can do that, and I think you can do that, that will empower you to go beyond what you're doing today, much more. You can do things so unique that people will say, this is Prof Karim. Uh, okay, so, so he said he'll take up the challenge, it's great. So any more questions before I move on to instructional design? Any more questions or not? Okay. Marcila, Marcila said, learning at one time may only connect to a few learning traits, not all at a time. Okay, learning at one time may only connect to a few learning traits, not all at the time. Okay. Whew, okay, uh, how to tackle this one. But anyway, I think what is also important for from a learning point of view and also from a, a teacher point of view when you're creating content is that you need to figure out some when you work best to design. I work best in ideas. Uh, I like to wake up very early, three, four o'clock in the morning. Three or four o'clock, my brain is like in amazing mode and no everybody's sleeping, so I, my brain can really function well. Uh, so some people are, maybe like to work at middle of the night. Uh, like Dr. Amira, Dr. Amira sent me a WhatsApp two o'clock at night, Dr. Amira, why? Eh? <laughs> no, regarding this uh, webinar. So I was like, what do I wake up three o'clock in the morning? But anyway, and she goes to sleep probably two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> the two different worlds, okay? Uh, so, okay. So, learning at one time may only connect to a few learning traits. No. Okay. So, I, I'm okay. Marcela basically said, I'm not sure how to interpret that, but there's my, you can read her statement. Learning at what time may only connect to a few learning traits, not all at a time, because it can be taxing to the educator, okay? Okay, so we're going to look at instructional design. And one of the things I want to share with you is, uh, let me just take away this. Huh? Uh, when you're doing, uh, when you are doing presentations using a webinar and you're showing a PowerPoint, one of the things you can do is, later for the Q&A, is here, eight, I'll teach you how to do that tomorrow. You can see here, I've hyperlinked all my topics from each topic slide. So when, So if you ask me like a question about Digital drawing, I can go straight to my digital drawing, especially if you have a lot of slides, because I have a lot of slides, a lot of visuals. So if I want, if you ask me a question and I want to jump somewhere, I have to go squeamish, especially when you're online, streaming to hundreds of slides to find what you're looking. 
uh, or close my screen. No, you don't need to do that. One of the things I will teach you tomorrow is do hyperlinking to so make it very efficient to run around my presentation. Because here now, I can just mouse over text also, home, learning, instruction design. Uh, so I want to go to copyright, I can jump straight to copyright section. So this is very important to make it more uh, structured. Huh? You can do that using hyperlinking. That's something I will cover tomorrow. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you prefer Bill Gates' presentation on the left or you prefer Steve Jobs, he's, he's passed away, but Steve Jobs' presentation on the right? Which one you prefer? And please share a bit in the chat why you think so, if you can. I'll be in the chat looking at your amazing reflections. <laughs> Okay, one Ahmad Hafiz said, any exam regarding Bill Gates and Steve Jobs presentation? If there is an exam, I prefer Bill Gates. Okay, <laughs> more detail, okay, okay, okay. But assume that you have him and his video, uh, him presenting, so you have both, okay? Uh, Tamara says Steve Jobs more engaging, okay? Uh, Shah Hazila says Steve Jobs clean and clearer and so on. Huh? Elsa says to me, I like both. Hey, what? Uh, sorry, my chat just disappeared on me. Okay, because we have 101 in this group here, so it's quite active. It's good. Uh, where are we now? Uh, Rosna basically says, depend on the context. For now, Steve Jobs, maybe it's it's more colorful. Okay, there's no right and wrong here, by the way. Eh? This is your own opinion. Okay, this is very important. Shams Amir Shamsul Bahar, uh, basically doctor or prof. I'm not sure, but Steve Jobs. He likes Steve Jobs because he tells a story. Okay. Bill Gates is okay. Steve Jobs has the content description, more description, okay? Simon Alexander says, if Job presented well, then he is more effective. Gates is too cluttered, okay? Interesting. Thank you very much, Simon. Intan Suhana basically says, Steve Jobs, more focused, engaging, easy to follow, okay? One Noor Asma basically said, yeah, it depends on the preferences. So we say we have all our opinions. I'm not saying one is right over the other. As you said, it depends on the context, but it's good to know uh, uh, we, we'll look at bit, but we'll talk about this for the next one half hour. Uh, basically, looking at this, okay. But this is more interesting. Also, they actually did a comparison for the same uh, conference, 2007. Average words per sentence. Uh, Steve Jobs only had 10 words per sentence. Bill Gates has 21.6 words per sentence. He has longer sentences. Uh, the difficulty level of the words, uh, less jargon and so on. Steve Jobs used, used very simple language. He only 2.9% was complex. Compared to Bill Gates, it's also quite good. Difficult words, only 5% difficult words. Grade level, this is US 5.5. Grade level for Bill Gates to understand is 10.7. And from this, uh, I think it's very important to keep, this is very challenging, especially as you become the higher professor that speaks in a language that is so ex exceptional to, so impressive, but maybe not so many people understand, is you need to cut down the complex complexity of the words. You simplify as much as possible, use simple language. And if you can do that, that will empower you to do better teaching and also better e-learning content. I think it's very important to simplify. You can have complex terms, but you have to find ways to simplify that complexity. Huh? Okay, so this is very interesting. Huh? So we're going to instructional design. So today, I'm actually going to focus on content, but instructional design, or they call it learning design, covers much more. We're talking about blended learning, online learning, uh, flipped classroom, and this I like this from, he passed away, by unfortunately, but Clay Christian Institute, they have this model on blended learning. They have in, So this is all big thing. I cannot cover this uh, in this workshop. I'm not the right person. You probably see Prof Karim and so on. But I'm going to focus on content. Huh? But it's good to know you need to find the right blend when you want to. At the moment, everything is online because of, uh, because of our corona. But in general, in the future, when corona slows down and we go back to reality, I think we will still more and more will go to the blended approach, what works and what things. And that this is a big issue. But I'm going to focus on that. And also, you cannot run away from constructive alignment. You, you have learning outcomes. It needs to be aligned with assessment. It needs to be aligned to the content. And it needs to be aligned to the activities. All this is going to, it's not going to change much. But I'm going to focus today and tomorrow. I'm going to focus on that content aspect. You want to present your content. You want to inspire people. You want to engage people. You want to 
create content that actually creates those aha moments. I understand you simplified, you saved my life. Because they did a research in Malaysia. This was by Prof. Arul Phillips, uh, John Arul Phillips. Uh, he's now in Asia University. He told me he teaches critical thinking. He, they did a research. And the two, at that time, this is about 15 years ago or something. The two most important things that students in Malaysia look for a teacher is two things only. Two things. If you can do that, you are a successful teacher. One is make me understand. In other words, simplify things so I understand. The second thing is care for me. Those are the two most things. You care for your student and you help them to understand something. You are a really successful teacher according to the research that was done. I think it's not much different now. You care for me. I think that's very important in Malaysia. I think maybe in Norway, they don't give a hoops if they care for you. But in Malaysia, you must care for your students. So important. And the second is, or maybe the most important is to make them understand, of course. Those two things only. Okay. Instruction design compared to learning design focus more, if you talk about terminologies, focusing on the content, huh? the process of creating learning content. Okay. And the other day, other days, in, especially in the corporate, you want to identify the gaps in terms of knowledge, skills, and attitudes, and then analyzing it, and then you develop content to close it. Okay. And the third one is help you with the strategy of meaningful, simplified, and effective learning content. So today we're going to focus on the content. And I'm going to introduce to you something called action mapping. So before I introduce you to action mapping, I want to ask you in the chat, how many you can say yes or no? How many of you have heard about action mapping? Okay, the lag is not bad. Huh? I think the lag is about five seconds, four seconds, not bad. <laughs> we do action plan, okay. <laughs> so a lot of no's, never had, okay. Okay, action mapping is using corporate e-learning. But, but I like it in the sense that I think we can learn a lot from it. Because a lot of people, what they do is, I used to do the same. I was an instructor. <laughs> okay, wait, there's somebody here. Let, let me just, I have to find somebody's. Okay, <laughs> Amin Sultan, can you please switch off, mute your mic? Amin Sultan. Okay. okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. It's a lot of noise, huh? Okay, we're gonna go to action mapping. So not many of you heard of it. Uh, okay, it's you can Google it later. I I'll provide some of the links later. Unfortunately, I cannot share these slides because I'm supposed to do this workshop webinar a lot after I finish my uh, this webinar. So you can access the materials from here, but I will not be making these particular slides available until the end of the year. But I've made some, because I'm on my own now, I'm self-employed, so I can't, like if I was an academic, I share all my content straight away, because I don't depend on it. But now as a self-employed, I actually depend on my content quite a lot. Because, uh, and a lot of people like to use my content, even uh, commercially in, in, in the, and we call it in the corporate sector. Okay, so action mapping, what is that? Okay, uh, Kathy Moore, let me just share the link. Yeah, I'll I will I will share you with the link. Yeah, while we're here, so you can have the link. I'll share in the in the in the. You can have the link here. Uh, uh, I'll just share the link here. Yeah? You can if you want. If I'm so boring, you can watch the video. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So basic action making was designed by Katie Moore. I can't remember what year, two thousand something four. Or something. So they have re kind of reversed approach. I think academics do that, right? But they have reversed the approach. So what they do is the first thing they do is identify the business goal. Okay. In in we don't have a business goal in corp in in higher education. We have a learning outcome, or you want to call it learning goal or learning objective. Okay, but just say learning outcome. So this is the same. We identify the outcome. Now the second step, what they do is they identify what people need to do to reach that goal. So here here's skill base, but it can also be knowledge base. But we focus on skills because we need to teach a lot of skills also in higher education. So okay, now we identify the skills. This is still the same, and then we design the activities that help the people prepare and practice each paper. So after they have identified what the st students need to do, which I think is standard, they start designing the activities. In other words, they don't even look at the content first, except for designing. They design the activities first, and then number four, they identify the minimum information or the minimum content people need to complete each activity. And now what I like about that is a lot of people say, we cannot offer the course, we cannot offer the subject, because we're always building the materials, right? This approach looks at differently. First, you need to identify learning on which you do. Uh, you identify what needs to be done and activities need. And then you build activities. And today, with, the reason it's very good today is because more, much of the content that you teach is already out there. But what you need to do is design awesome activities.
activities that really empower deep learning and deep uh, developing the skills and active behavior. And of course, incorporates even deeper because sometimes they discover when they do this process, they realize they don't need any content at all because the problem is nothing to do with this, the, the, the people in the, in the corporate company. They already know what to do. They know the, all this. The reason they're not doing is nothing to do with courses or learning. It's something to do with attitude. So they actually need to sit down with the with the corporate stuff and figure out why are you not doing what you already know. Uh, so that's one of the things from the corporate sector that action map becomes so powerful. So sometimes you don't need to develop a course at all. You just need to figure out why the person is not doing what he's supposed to do. Huh? But I think in academic world we can also apply it because we focus because we focus too much on developing good content and spend sometimes too little time on designing exceptional learning activities that will empower you to achieve the learning outcome. Uh, so I would recommend before even thinking about learning content, design the activities, spend a lot of time designing the activities for the learning to take place. And then you start thinking about the content because today content is so widely available. And we don't, as again, we are at university level. We don't need to spoon feed the students. We can give them instead of for one topic, just giving them PowerPoints that we can give them a few links, read this on your own and you make sense of it. And you come back to tell us what it is instead of giving them everything. But we, but we design those activities that will empower them to achieve the learning out and become exceptional in their own profession later as they go on. Okay. So I'll be, before I move on, so what do you think about action mapping until now? And do you actually see it as relevant to you? Or, or you know about this already and you do it already. You don't design content first. You design the activities first and so on. So maybe you can share that in the forum before we, we move on. Okay, Prof. Karim basically said action mapping is used in the corporate, but the basic idea is apply is applicable to any situation. But tool, but tool, uh, yes. Anyone else wants to put on some, uh, uh, add some, uh, add to it? Okay, BM Suju, haha. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Prof. Karim is a good student. Huh? He's a good, he's a fantastic educator and he's a good student. Okay. This is great for project management model. Yes, Jerry Chong. Yeah, why not? That's uh, very good. But I think it's very important for academics not to focus too much on content first, because that's the most difficult aspect to do. You can ask Prof. Karim. The most difficult aspect is to develop content, not the activities. But a lot of people, they spend so much time on the content, they have so little time for the activities. I had that experience myself when I used to develop instructional design, when I was an instructional designer. We develop content. We're not focusing on activities at all. We're just focusing on developing content, content, content. And then we have a little time to develop the activities. OK? OK. Uh, I, I think Ng Li Luan says the measurable goal Bit can be challenging at times. Yes, measurable goal is very challenging. I wish we had time to discuss that, but that is something, it's, it's not easy. Sometimes you need to have rubrics and so on to make it sure that data. Shamsuddin Abdullah said, can you show a specific example of action mapping? I cannot actually at this moment, <laughs> uh, because I, I haven't, uh, I apply it in kind of an informal way when I design content, but I don't, but I, I just share from my own experience. You can Google it. I'm sure there's a lot there from KT more. If you want tomorrow, maybe I'll try to find some research on it. But a good example is when you're designing your course, okay? When you're designing your course, what do you focus on first? A lot of people, they don't design the activities first. They design the content first. And then they say, okay, after you finish content, okay, what kind of quiz should I have? What, do you actually need a quiz? Does the learning outcome specify, is it high order thinking skills or low order thinking skills? You know, they don't focus too much. Focus on the learning outcomes, focus on activities, and then go into the content, if you ask me. Okay. Uh, Shah Hazila Muhammad Ismail says, I kind of use this method when creating lessons, but I don't know it's called action mapping. It's okay. A lot of things we do is, is, is something that somebody else has labeled. So it's good. You're probably already doing uh, action mapping. Okay. Marcila says, it's about measuring behavior change. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, train young. I don't know if that's a name. Train by young. Okay, young. Action mapping like planning a course of action. Yes, okay. It's usually action mapping is very good for skill based course. I'm not sure where it's how good it's for knowledge based courses. Okay. Abdul Karim says action mapping is simply action oriented approach to learning. Uh, okay. Yeah, Batul. Okay, so uh, I've listened to you now. Now it's my turn to talk. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share with you the one that I was. This is one of the first thing I learned when I went into instructional design, and I still apply it today. It's called Gangne's Nine Events of Instruction. Okay, it's basically helping you to design the flow of the presentation. 
Okay, it's not helping you before you do your presentation. It's more focusing on what kind of flow should your presentation or your learning experience have. Huh? So this was the one of the first thing I learned in 2001. And that's one of the things of the instruction design things that I've learned that still sticks with me until today. And a lot of people has not been exposed to it. So can I ask you again, how many of you actually been exposed to Gangnes nine events of instruction? Can I get a few no's or yes? At least I know where I'm at. How many of you have been exposed No, no, no. Yes, okay. Uh, Jai, of course. La Daishi, Mawani, welcome. And Doctor Jai, okay. No, no. Yes, yes. There's more notes. I wish I had a. I cannot do more polling. I should have used that too. But this is one of the things I find Google Meet lacking is they don't have a simple poll too. I used to ask. I used to have a lot of polls in my webinars. Huh? Okay, so we are going to uh, look at this. Okay, it's good. It's a lot of no's and some yeses. Okay, but this tool is a very simple tool to help you to design. Your lecture is so basic to design your lecture to design. Let me just take a glass. Right? To design your tutorial, even when you give a presentation, you're, you're presenting in a conference or you're giving a TED talk, Gangnes Nine Street can help you. I'm not saying it's the complete model, but it, those nine elements you'll find in, in most presentations needs to be there. Okay. So we made fun of, uh, not made fun of, but we, Bill Gates. Actually, people that don't know Bill Gates. Uh, no, get Bill Gates after Steve Jobs see him as a fantastic presenter because he did something after that presentation. I, I can't remember what year. What year was it? Uh, I'm not sure what year it was. He gave another TED talk. Okay, and what he did in that TED talk, he basically he let out some mosquitoes and he said it was malaria and that shocked the people. So he basically said. Uh, there is no reason only poor people should get malaria. And people in the crowd were shocked. Hey, are you letting go of malaria on us? Actually, it's just normal mosquitoes. But that moment, which I, is something called an attention grabber or a star moment, is something that we as academics need to infuse more. I'm not saying you're not doing it. Maybe you're doing it. But it's to gain the student's attention at the beginning of a learning session to, to drive the rest of the motivation, hopefully throughout the full lecture or the full uh, online model and so on. And this is so. After this, this special moment, uh, Bill Gates became actually well known. So people that know don't know Steve Jobs, uh, the new generation see Bill Gates as something amazing presenter. Because, but that magical moment, that was his magical moment. Something called the star moment. Okay, there's no audio here. So, but I, you know what I do? I, I can share with you the video. Uh, let me just share with you the video now, so you can watch me. You can watch it. Uh, uh, it's just an extraction. So, uh, you can uh, let me just put it in the chat. Huh? Can have it here. Okay, it's there. It took the, the chat there. It's a, it's a short version of it. Just that moment that he has there. Okay. Okay. Uh, so there's something called the star moment. This is by Nancy. This is my own. This is my own drawings, by the way. So if you're wondering where I get these graphic from, graphics from is actually I draw myself, and I'll show tomorrow how I draw. I have a small session. I just want to introduce you to digital drawing. This is Nancy Duarte. She's a fantastic guru. We have one in USM also. Prof. Karim can, uh, Aisha Saad, she's also one of those, I think she's now the top guru in Malaysia for academic. Level is on the point, huh? she's fantastic. Yeah? She's on her own, by the way, now. So, But anyway, this is Nancy Duarte. She came up with an acronym called STAR Moment. Huh? And it stands for something they all they'll always remember. So when you, what it basically saying that is when you have a lecture, have an e-learning content or module or a micro, you should the first thing you one of the things you need to have a, a star moment, something that they'll always remember from that session. Even when I advise, when I've done, uh, I've been a judge for some uh, conferences. One of the things I I always tell them is that. This, at the end of your presentation, ask yourself, and you should plan that, what is the one thing that they will remember? And if you can design that into your presentation, it's very powerful. Because to be honest, when people go for a conference, for example, if they listen to eight talks, they're probably just going to remember one single thing from your presentation. Maybe nothing, but hopefully one thing. And, have you, and, and if you can design that into presentation to make sure that they remember that, it becomes extremely powerful. Like, for example, me, one of the things I did when I do my presentations uh, unfortunately, that's not always the right thing, but I used to sometimes juggle balls. 
And the places where I have juggled balls, even in Turkey, when I juggled three balls and so on, I didn't bring my balls today, so I can't juggle. But that moment has become my own storm. Moment. Unfortunately, fortunately, when I'm teaching about learning skills, but unfortunately, when I'm teaching something, it's come the star moment. So star moment can be anything from stories, about memorable drama, shocking stats. It could be visuals. It could be re repeatable sound bites. It could be something that really engages the mind to make them think more and oh, oh, oh like that aha moment uh, so that star moment something they want. this is something always keep in mind in what you do and that's gangnis nine instruction actually is called the gain attention attention grabber i want to ask you how many can they tell me what is the second step in gangnis nine or the second uh, event in gangnis you've gained attention what's the second thing you can you should do can anybody tell me Okay, Simon, like I said, welcome, greetings. Okay, 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 hello. <laughs> engage them. Okay, I, yeah, Irena, Irena Young, uh, you're already engaging them through the attention grab, but of course you should engage them throughout, but the, the objectives, okay, Jerry Chong says objectives, inform objective, okay. This is called, or according to Gangnes Nine Events Instruction, is to present learning outcomes, which is uh, going to Chong the same thing, yeah? So the first thing, is, so some academics I've seen with my own eyes, and I've also maybe done the mistake before, is when you go to class or even in your online content, before gaining the student's attention with something exciting about what you're going to teach or want to share, you're just presenting their comments. Or to this today, or this module, or this lecture, or this topic we're going to, after this topic has been completed, you'll be able to blah, 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 blah. So the students are not following it. I can tell you myself, when I studied in Malaysia, I did my bachelor's and master's without ever, I never looked at a learning outcome, never. And even draw my attention, I still could do well without it. But if I had actually studied learning outcomes, I would have been more specific and focused. It just, it didn't gain my attention, okay? So it's very important to, you wanna gain the student's attention before we go to learning outcomes, they, yeah? And then the third one is to stimulate recall of prior learning. If you can stimulate recall of prior learning, it's very powerful. I, I will go more depth in this each one, I'm just gonna cover them, huh? and then, to present new content, now to present new content. And then is to provide guidance, present in different ways. Eh? And then is to provide learning activities. Now, keep in mind, eh, learning activities can be applied throughout. Eh? It's not something you have to start at step six, but it's just reminding you that you need to provide learning activities, okay? And then provide feedback. If you have learning activities, you have to have feedbacks. And online education, for low order thinking skills like quizzes and so on, you can give them tons of feedback, nonstop. The more difficult part is the open-ended question, which we, we, we will look at a bit, but that's something that Prof Karim or you had that uh, Prof Fauzia from uh, UM and so on that discovered assessment can look at. And then number eight is to assess learning. And then the final one is after you assess learning, enhance retention, retention and transfer. You should conclude, recap, and then bring it to the next level. Empower them to explore new content related to the, the subject matter or the topic to make them more interesting, okay? So this is a summary, but I'm going to go through each one now. The next 30 minutes, I'm actually going to go through each one, how to gain attention, how to present learning and so on, okay? So before we go together, any questions? Okay. Okay, Marcela says inform objective. Of course, we should greet. I think uh, the learning, uh, Gangnes learning events focus, uh, yeah, greeting should take place. I think greeting should take even you should greet people before even the tension ever. I mean, unless you want to be like surprised, but <laughs> you don't say hi, you just go dun, 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 and then hi. <laughs> okay, all good, huh? Jerry Chong says everything is good. Okay, we have, we have exactly 100 people now online. That's so nice to have uh, exactly 100 people. <laughs> and it will drop a bit. It's like a stock market dropping, are going up and down. Okay. Okay. So before I show this slide, how do we gain attention? Okay, first, Ma'an al Katib said, so you think presenting learning outcome is not effective? Aha, I'll get to learning outcome. I'm not saying presenting learning outcome is not effective. I'm saying when I studied, I did not look at them. But of course, they're effective. If, if the learning outcome is developed according to Bloom's taxonomy and is relevant, and it, it's very powerful. But it, it, for me, I didn't use it. I still managed to get on Dean's list and, and do quite well. Okay, of course, it's important. Okay, so thank you very much for that question, Ma'an al Katib. So what we're going to do now is, I'm going to ask you, I want to ask you from your own experience, how do you gain attention, students' attention? 
how do you what do you do to gain students attention can you please share that now in the in the we use the chat to discuss i hope that's okay if you type slowly it's okay i'll be listening to you Okay, I mean, Ilya says call name, uh, asking them questions. Okay, we go, oh my God, you know, I cannot keep track of because if I miss your name, I'm sorry, because yeah, people are asking. Okay, I'll just go. Raju says start with stories. Okay, El Sanifa says like to use pantum. I have to Google what is pantum. Huh? Pantun. Pan oh, Powtoon. <laughs> you talk about Powtoon huh? or oh, the tool. Yeah, great videos. Okay. Uh, Asma likes to talk. They like to talk. So you ask them to talk. Okay. Jai, smile and eye contact. Yeah. Okay, so Jai, that's nice. But how do you smile if you have like 300 students, 400 students in front of you? I know, I mean, I used to have that. Uh, how do you manage to, do you have a like, strategy to smile on everyone? Uh, it's an interesting uh, challenge. But if you have a few students, it's very good just to smile and eye contact, okay? Uh, Raba, Raba, Razak, Razak, ask them questions, okay, good. Shazila, tell stories, tell jokes, okay. Regarding jokes, huh, I remember I was at UKM, I was at UKM, there was one lecturer who told me this is about jokes. Huh? Uh, he told me that he always tells jokes at the beginning of the class and the students laugh ha 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 but he said he has one problem when the students sit for the exam many of them remember his jokes but don't remember the subject <laughs> so in other words when you tell jokes it's okay make sure it doesn't enhance it it, uh, it becomes so funny <laughs> that you forget the rest okay but jokes is good but you have to be careful on jokes in terms of malaysia in terms of cultural racial there's a lot of issues that you need to be so jokes can be good but you have to take do a good a diligent homework to make sure your jokes don't offend people and so on i think that yeah there's so many things with jokes that is good and bad but if you're good at it it's great but it can it can backfire sometimes huh? intan uses uh, relevant clinical stories okay that's very good case studies uh I, when i was at imu they always a lot of them start with case studies use case studies as a part of the learning process uh, in the lectures and so on share their experiences okay elhamir abdul ghani uh, share their experiences um Raju likes uh, jokes, okay. Brain teases about topic, okay, Mankala. Story, Jai story. Current events, latest series. Uh, Noor Azian, post questions, call time. Shamsuddin, magic trick, okay. You're a magician, that's great. Um, student imposed punishment when losing <laughs> class competition. 10 push ups straight away. Okay, uh, great. Greet them, greet them first before they greet us, okay. Okay, that's interesting, but. Uh, we just to share how you greet if you have three foreign students at one time and that's not so much a problem now except online okay uh haliza put picture tell them stories games shocking so as you see here i, I also because there's so many interesting you can read the comments so you can see here, there's so many ways to share and that's what i have in this slide you can see here question stories personal experience quote humor demonstration not demonstrasi, yeah. <laughs> they demonstrate definition video clips very popular so tomorrow i'm going to focus on in terms of presentation tools i'm going to focus on powerpoint but there are a lot of tools you can use you can use google presentation you can use keynote you can high code prezi i don't know if many people are using prezi but still actually i've been on my own so i my in my office i i ran a co-working space office in common ground uh, I asked the young people there, the average age is 24. Most people there don't use all these tools. They use actually Canva because uh, they don't do much presentation. They, they don't prepare many presentation slides. They prepare more, mostly graphics for the Instagram, social media, and posters and so on. But that Canva for them was the tool for them to use. Now. That was, so that's among the young generations, they're very much Canva. We are the PowerPoint generation. Young people are very much often the Canva generation from my exposure to what they're doing. Now. Okay, in terms of engagement, uh, this is where Prof. Karin can come in. Uh, actually, there's so many tools we can use. I'm using Slido because the Google Meet cannot do so many questions. So I can get uh, asked questions through Slido in terms of uh, polls and so on. You've got Kahoot. Kahoot is from Norway, by the way, the same place as my mom. Uh, and then you have uh, Padlet, Clickers. I'm not, these tools I'm not going to go through. But what I'm trying to say, to, to gain students' attention, to engage the students, uh, there's a lot of tools out there, and they're quite easy to use. Uh, the first tool I ever used was this one. I, I did it at uh, uh, quite a few places. I, two, I think about 13 years ago, 14 years ago, I used Poll Everywhere. Even when the first time I went to USM, like you can ask Prof. Karim, we used, we used to use a lot of Poll Everywhere because one of the first tools out there. But then Mentimeter came out, which is a 
better version of Fall Everywhere. And now they have Slido. I've been away with Woo Club. I'm going to try Woo Club tomorrow with you. I'm trying Slido today with you. They got Flippity, very interesting. You can do uh, Want to Be a Millionaire. And Padlet, which can capture people's experiences, share their projects and so on. Plickers is for people that don't have phones. You can do it through QR code. So a lot of tools you can use. And, and, and that's not part of my webinar. But what I'm saying to you is in terms to engage the students today, whether it's online or face to face or blended mode, there's so many tools to try out there. And if you ask me, there's one tool that has become the de facto tool to engage and also gamify. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's Kahoot. Uh, people have been some overdose. I think when I when I go back to Army, a lot of people are overdose of Kahoot. But Kahoot is one of those tools that uh, are very is very popular to engage. Okay, and then besides uh, engagement tools, you have video animation tools. Somebody already mentioned Powtoon. You got Video Scribe. You got Biteable. You got Platogen. You got Go Animate, which is commercial. Anyway. Movely. A lot of people use or still use Powtoon to do. And see, these tools, this is the problem I have. I've attended a lot of webinars the last three weeks, four weeks. They show you hundreds of tools. Huh? Unfortunately, these tools are good for fluff. I mean, the beginning part, maybe uh, uh, introduction part, uh, sharing knowledge. Huh? But when you go to your subject matter, and it goes in, but 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 they are all still exceptional tools to divide, to design an attention grab. You want to gain students' attention. Say that I'm teaching medicine. I'm I'm talking about uh, Corona. I could create a video uh, production in Powtoon, one minute video about the latest facts about Corona. You know how many people died in the US, how many people is dying. So you can create it quickly, uh, and that's where tools like Powtoon becomes very powerful. You can create these videos very quickly and these kind of tools. Okay, so there are two tools. Uh, you have the engaged presentation tools. So I'm going to focus on tomorrow. I'm just going to focus on one tool. I'm going to spend two hours on how you can design awesome things just in PowerPoint. I'm not saying it's the best tool, but unfortunately, unfortunately, I think nearly 100%, 99% of all academics use it. So let's see what we can do with it, okay? Uh, but there's a lot of tools they can try out. And I think Prof. Karim will be sharing some of these tools. He's already done, and he'll probably do more. There's a lot of tools to engage. And there's also a lot of video animation tools. These are just some, but these are very common tools. Okay. So b before I go to learning outcomes, is there anything else you guys want to share regarding tools and your experience with tools? Tools, too much tools, or so? Prof. Karim says WooClap is a good alternative to Mentimeter. Okay. Prof. Karim again is active, suggesting Google Slides. Uh, he's going to do a webinar soon, anyway. So <laughs> he'll be sharing from all this. Okay. Canva is superb, worth to subscribe, but a bit expensive, okay? Okay. Marcela says, good internet width, otherwise a failure. Yeah, okay, interesting. What else? As you can see, there's a lot of tools out there. You should not be discouraged, but I always recommend try one or just try one tool and make it work for a few webinars. Don't get into too many tools. You need people like Prof. Karim, uh, maybe me and Dr. Amira, or people from other people from UM or top, so to advise you to link you to a tool. But most of these tools are quite easy to use, so you don't need to worry. Once you have identified a good tool, using them is not difficult. Prof Jai, uh, Jai, she, she knows that. She's tried a lot of tools, including Plickers. Huh? You ask, if you want to use Plickers, you see uh, Dr. Jai. She knows how to use Plickers, huh? <laughs> which is using QR code. Huh? Uh, five tools enough. Prof Karim advice is five tools enough. OK. We talk about tools. If you ask me, when you're getting in, how many? OK, I want to ask you. Uh, how many of you are actually getting into online learning for the first time? Can can you, anybody says no? I mean yes. How many is the first time you're getting into uh, online learning? Is this the first time you're getting into online learning, or you've been doing it a lot? Because this is my advice. Okay, no, you're done. Huh? This no, this is not the first time. Huh? My advice in general: there's there's only a few tools you actually need to get into online learning and do very well. You need to have uh, you need to have a webinar tool, because obviously. So here we're using Google Meet. You have uh, Zoom. You have Centra. You have WebEx. I don't know if Centra still exists. I used to use Centra, but these are the core tools: Zoom, Google Meet, and and Streamyard is another one, but not many people use. But I think Zoom. And most people are using Zoom now. Google Meet and maybe WebEx. Eh? Prof. Karim, any other tools that we add for webinar? I'd recommend to use. You can use Facebook again. Yeah, Facebook Live is okay. You can use YouTube. I think Facebook Live is pretty good, but it's limited. But it's not. I like Facebook Live, is because they have the poll. I like to do a lot of polls, and you can do it quickly. I don't. You just create the polls. In Google Meet, you cannot do polls. It's not embedded in the tool, which is quite weak. 
Okay. Oh yeah, Microsoft. Sorry, sorry, Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft Teams. Yes, you can use Microsoft Teams. In in, in most universities, public universities in Malaysia use Microsoft Teams. Thanks, Sham Samir. Uh, Marcela says also need to overcome digital learning barriers and prepare Plan B. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Jai says can share with Facebook. Facebook Live is good. I think Facebook Live is is going to launch a new version soon. Oh, they already launched. I tried out with some bugs with the video, but it's pretty good. Okay. So a lot of tools we can use. Okay. So that's tools. A lot of tools. But as I said, we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on design for the next 40 minutes before I'm done. And then we're going to, tomorrow we're going to focus on PowerPoint and how, what we can maximize with that. Okay. So the second thing we talked about gain attention is learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are important. But one of the challenges of learning, learning outcomes you need. It's something that required from MQA. It's a good to have learning outcomes because it allows you to relate it to Bloom's taxonomy, which every academic must follow according to MQA. But the question is how to make it exciting to students. Huh? One way of doing is you can see the outcomes is written. This is a typical way outcomes are written. Another way is to convert your outcomes into questions. I mean, you have your learning outcomes for MQA and for the teachers to understand what they need to teach, but you convert your learning outcomes to questions for your students. So instead of saying, clarify what students need to learn from the learning outcome, how to, you're asking, so how to write learning outcomes? How to make learning uh, uh, outcomes assessment based? How to use action verbs to construct measurable learning outcomes? How to present learning outcomes in at least two creative ways? So in other words, I have transformed these outcomes because learning outcomes is designed in, in a structured mobile. You should be able to do this, 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 this. People learn better when things are formulated. It's more interesting when it's formulated in terms of questions. So what sometimes you can do is convert your learning outcomes into questions. And the interesting part, when you convert your learning outcomes to questions, you can actually see by looking at the question, is it answerable or not? Is it measurable or not? How to write learning outcomes? Is it measurable? It's very generic. So this is a very generic question. It's not so specific. So it might not be a good question. It might be confusing the students. Now, when looking at it from a, from an instruction point of view, clarify what students need to learn in the form of learning outcomes. Okay. So when you write in the form of questions, it might help you better to actually weed out the bad learning outcomes. Okay. So this is another way is to write learning out in the form of questions, not for MQA, not for the teachers, for the students. Okay. And of course, you need to base on Bloom's taxonomy, and you want to have higher order HOTS, which is create, evaluate, analyze, synthesize, and then you have, the, and apply. I think all these actually are higher order thinking skill. And then the lower, they call LOTS, lower order thinking skill is understand and remember. So you, I don't know the rules now, but last time there was rules that so much has to be high order thinking skills, and so much has to be lower order thinking skills in terms of each subject and each topic and so on. So that's something that you guys have to figure out. But you need to have a, a bit of HOTS, which is high order thinking skills and a bit of lots, which is lower learning skills, okay? So that's learning outcomes, huh? And then once you have done the gain attention, you have opened your mind. Actually, in the learning module, some people don't even put the learning outcomes in the uh, in the content itself. They just have a separate, so that's up to you. I, I'm not, I'm quite, if you ask me, I, it's the most important, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, is that students need to get hold of these learning outcomes and it becomes a learning tool for them. And uh, that's something I never experienced. I think if I, I got on Dean's list, without learning outcomes. I could have got on a much higher list if I actually used learning outcomes. Huh? At least save me time to study, OK? So recall prior knowledge. So how do you recall prior knowledge, OK? Associating new information with prior knowledge can facilitate learning process, OK? So what are the techniques to stimulate recall, OK? Can we have a discussion on that? So how do we stimulate recall? Any one ideas? While we're doing that, uh, OK, so while we're thinking about how to stimulate recall, Prof. Karim said the essential Zoom, Google Sites, Google Forms, Socrative, and Screencast. Yes, but you still need to have a tool. This is not only the essentials. Essential should be you should need to have a tool to communicate. So either Telegram or WhatsApp, you probably need. And also, you need a tool to present uh, your, no, your content. So I, I'm not sure how good Google Sites or Google Forms. You probably need a presentation tool. And that's usually going to be Keynote or PowerPoint. So in other words, you need to have an LMS also, that in Prof. Karim mentions Google site. We probably need Moodle here in University of Malaya. So you need to upload the contents and do quizzes. 
and assessment and assignments and forums and then you need to have a tool to present it could be anything but in in this case say powerpoint and you need to have a webinar tool it could be zoom or it could be google meet and so on or microsoft teams and then you need to have a tool that you have this social bit informal kind of communication you always keep especially instead like uh, whatsapp or telegram huh? so there's actually four key ones huh? Okay, Jai says got to check out StreamYard. StreamYard is good, but it can only have six videos at one time, the free version. Because huh? uh, I tried out StreamYard. I did it with uh, Anita Adnan, uh, one of the interviews I did, yes. But StreamYard is good for uh, interviews and discussions, small group discussions. The free one is up to six. Huh? Okay. But I want to share with you something very interesting. Huh? When it comes to webinar tools, huh, I started doing webinars in 2005, 15 years ago. And I have to admit, uh, the webinar tools in 2000, uh, the 16 and 17 was not so user friendly, but they had features that I still see missing in today's webinars. I give, I'm going to share with you some of the features that I used to use 15 years ago, okay, using Centra. Uh, I think Centra still exists, but one feature is missing here in Google Meet is raising your hand. When people have a question, instead of just necessarily, is they don't have a raising hand feature here, which although Zoom has, Zoom has. Um, but they don't have it in Google Meet, and they should have. Another feature which is very important is uh, having uh, quizzes, not quizzes, quizzes you can, it's okay, you can do but polls, you can write quick polls, which they have in Facebook Live, and they also have in Zoom, but polls is very important. You want to ask questions and get uh, percentages, and so, be, so when you present, you're discussing, it becomes more scientific. And I think another feature which is very good, but I don't see, I'm not sure whether it's in Zoom, uh, is actually, in Centra, you can break it up into groups. So if you have a real deep discussion, say I'm teaching engineering or I'm doing medical, I'm doing case studies, we can do a case study and then we do group discussion. So I, I, I set up, I can set up six groups and either random selection or you select who's in the group, they break out into groups, you take a half an hour break and they, they work in groups and you can go to each group and see what they're doing. And then after the group discussion, they go, you get back into the main room. In other words, you break out into six rooms or seven rooms. They do their discussion. Nobody sees what everyone else is doing. Then you go back to the main room, and then each group will present what each uh, room has discussed. And that's one of the features that I think is really powerful. And I, I don't see that in Google Meet, but maybe they have that in Zoom. Huh? But that's something that was already 15 years ago, so I don't understand why I cannot see these kind of features uh, today, which is 2020. Yeah? Okay, so other tools mentioned here. Shamsuddin say question. Okay, ask. Okay, we go. Okay, Man says Kahoot. Use Kahoot. Uh, Abdul Karim, uh, Sukrative. He loves Sukrative. It's a good tool to do quizzes. Uh, Nur Azian post questions. Okay. Irena uh, Young says use case studies. Uh, critical thinking scenario by Marcela. I always pronounce this word. Analogy. Analogy. Okay. Okay. And Prof Karim mentioned that I used to use WizIQ. I, actually, WizIQ, I got some problems with that. Uh, I had a lot of problems with it, but it's a good tool. But I had problem more on the back end and the front end. Front end is very good. The back end gives you a headache. But I think it may be improved now. Maybe it doesn't even exist. I'm not sure. <laughs> Elsa, you Zoom has breakout rooms. Okay, Zoom has breakout rooms. Okay, thank you, Elsa. Yeah, I think breakout rooms is something very good if you know how to use it. And it has it like you can do random selection of groups so people get munched up in the group. Like that, or you can select who is in each group. Uh, but that doesn't work very well if you have four, five hundred online but if you have like 40 people or 30 people sometimes you want to break out in groups and have independent thinking independent group discussion and so on okay uh marcila says brainstorm words related to category intended coordinate all these ideas and come back that is cool. okay man katab says only paid zoom have breakout breaking breaking rooms breaking okay breakout rooms okay yeah yeah zoom is definitely have uh, the commercial version and the of course of course the free version will not empower you to do all the things because then nobody will buy the paid version but yes but i think breakout rooms is a basic feature and if google ever listens to my presentation please have breakout rooms and please have raise your hands and please have polls that's all that's all i'm asking for <laughs> okay so prof karim says you can pay 14 dollars per month us for zoom and then you'll have your breakout rooms i'm not I, i'm just interpreting that you'll get your breakout rooms huh? okay so these are some of the techniques that you can stimulate recall. You can bring some ideas, pre-test, share related experiences, anticipate what's coming next. Uh, uh, you can have problem solving. You can discuss what they already know. Or you can use a variety of media. We mentioned tools like video scribe. And, and, and one of the easiest ways is actually just to go to YouTube or elsewhere to find videos, short videos, and run it 
in your um, your presentation either either to stimulate recall or as an as an attention grabber. You don't have to always create uh, and reuse is not a bad idea. Okay. So number four is present the new content. Okay. So if if you have nothing to recall, then you just present the new content. Okay. So this is very important. You should chunk. Okay, I'm going a bit slower, but you should chunk and organize content. I'll be a bit lecture based for the next five minutes. Huh? Chunking and organizing content. This is the biggest challenge. If you ask me that anything that I've struggled with for fifth, nearly 20 years, 15 years, is to teach academics how to chunk and organize content in a meaningful way. Chunking is one of the most challenging things because you have to actually filter out what is essential and what is not so essential to be presented. It's, it's one of the most difficult skills to learn. Okay. So in other words, you need to chunk content. Huh? You have to chunk content, chop it up. Okay. In other words, how to find it, chop it up. So I'm just going to show you a quick an example. So this is an example. This is actually not so bad. I've seen much worse than this. I've seen sometimes one whole paragraph, 200 words on the slide. But this is actually a bullet slide. It's got bullets, but it probably got too many bullets on one slide. So if you present like this, maybe some students will like it. But if I'm uh, learning the subject for the first time, and my brain will switch off. The moment I see this slide, uh, my brain will just say, this is too much. I can't get it. I'm going to switch off. And that's one of the powers when you chunk and you, you you design your content. When people look at it and say, oh, it's like a pizza. Instead of giving the whole pizza, you give them one juicy piece and they'll just eat it. But if you give them the full pizza, they will warm it. And I'll get back to pizza sooner. So this is a bad example. So this is an example, the same slides presented in a bit better way. Uh, I, you can use this kind of, you can actually have, each one could be a separate slide, but sometimes you want to have all on one slide, it's up to you. But each one could have been a separate slide. But you see it has headers. Here there's no headers, right? You go back, there's no headers here. But here we have headers, you're broken down into subcategories. Huh? And you've highlighted the headers a bit better. Huh? Another way you could do like this, it's the same thing, but a different way. Instead of doing it uh, vert uh, horizontal, you do vertical. Or you could just have it simply like this. It's, I'm not saying this is the best example, but this is a very... You could actually start with this. So these are the, you tell the students there are three areas. There's functional requirements, there's deployment and operational requirements, and there's non-functional requirements. And then you go into uh, all three, or you maybe have a slide on different. But either way, it's just chunking it, simplifying it, and make it more digestible to learn, to understand, and comprehend. You want them to, in Malay, they say, what do they say? Na ingat na faham. Ingat cukup tak cukup. Na faham cuba. Juga. Faham and ingat. Some people, understanding, you have to understand. In university, any level, understanding is the most important. We also want to be able to recall it. Uh, some people understand, but they just cannot recall it for the exam or when it's necessary. Okay. So this is a drawing I did. I'm very happy with it. I did this drawing for this webinar. So please clap in the, I don't know if you can clap. That's another thing they have. <laughs> please clap for me. I prepare. I drew this. I spent eight hours drawing this for this webinar specifically. I wanted to have my own drawing on what is micro learning. So can I just get some claps in the, <laughs> I don't know how you clap in the, <laughs> I don't know how you clap. That's one of the funny features they had in, I, Facebook Live has that, that you can put likes and loves. I think sometimes you need to have that. <laughs> the Google Meet don't allow you to clap. Huh? <laughs> But that's something missing in Google Meet. That's something Facebook Live you can do. You can have a clap since that, okay? So, okay, yeah, you have the uh, emojis. Huh? Thank you. Clap 100 times, Amir. Okay, thank you very much. Clap, clap, clap. Okay. So this drawing I did specifically for this webinar. When Dr. Amira said that, I needed to have something on my learning. I said, I'm going to design my own content. So I drew this. I'll share tomorrow how I drew this. I use the one tool. Okay. So micro learning. What is micro learning? Prof. Karim is a master of this, but I'm going to share my own experience. What is micro learning? Huh? So micro learning, I give the example of... Uh, you can see the pizza example. Huh? Now, if I were to give you the pizza and ask you to swallow in one breath, you will warm it, you will sick, you will, uh, it's terrible. But if I cut it into pieces, I make it nice and juicy, and I, each one becomes separate pieces, and then you eat it slowly, you digest it, you, you get good digestion, you feel good, and so on. The same with learning, actually, the same thing. If you give too much, like when you go for conferences, they're just talking for, it's, like, it's just too much. I, I notice every conference I go to, uh, when there's, there's just lectures and talks, huh? After the conference, I got a bad headache. I need to take, I get a migraine, you know, when I go for conference, if it's only talks, you know, and I have to take medicine and so on. So I ask myself, why is it that? And the same thing with learning if it's not chunked well. Huh? So what is content is in small focused chunks. That's the simplest language I found out there that explains what is micro learning. And what it should be, it should be learning centric. It usually a micro learning content. When it, this is about chunking, instead of having a full blown lecture, you convert into e learning, you have a micro learning content. Huh? It's a single, it, you transform a learning unit into a single learning outcome. So it only covers one learning outcome, or maybe in just a half. 
it works on when you talk about micro learning, it should work on multiple devices. In other words, it should be it should be uh, uh, when you create content for micro learning, it should also work on your mobile phone, on your tablet, any device. Uh, that if it, if it doesn't work on any device, I would not call it micro learning. I mean, it's micro in terms of time, but it's not useful for them. just in time for corporate is so important and also academic when you want to learn something do you want to learn every like if i if i want to learn how to remove the background in powerpoint and the picture do i have to attend a three-day workshop to learn how to remove back no i want to get that particular video on how to remove background in my slides huh? so that's when i talk about when you do micro learning your content becomes like that you can just in time and micro learning should be short okay so actually i designed this this is very important huh? Because there's a lot of definition, what is micro? How short should micro learning be? Okay, so these are the examples. Huh? So usually the, the one of the the low, the craziest one is uh, Udacity. They try to keep a le micro learning unit is only one minute or less, or about one to two minutes. Huh? But to me, from my own experiences, try to keep it five minutes or less. If you can that, I put a smiley. That's that's a pretty good ex uh, in terms of how long it should be. That's a good practice. If you can do it five minutes, but sometimes you cannot. Five to ten minutes is okay, but then you're going to put people might put people to sleep. Remember, we discussed three to four minutes is the threshold. Huh? But if you can do it within five minutes, pretty good. Your micro learning unit uh, doesn't have to be you break apart uh, lecture, and ten to fifty minutes. Some people say up to fifty minutes is micro learning, but I say that's a bit too much. Huh? Uh, but, if you, but sometimes you have no choice. The content is so deep and you cannot break it apart. Uh, then you have to learn. But try to keep it less than fifteen minutes. If you can keep less than ten minutes, even better. And if you can keep less than five minutes, even better. Less than one minute. I've, I, very few have managed to do that over a over a whole course, maybe once or two units. Okay, so why should we use micro learning? Uh, it allows flexibility. When the content is shorter, you can be jogging, you can be waiting for a bus, you can you can buy. Now we, you know when you go to the, even when you want to buy fruit now, you wait. You, they only allow the fruit shops here in Tamantuna. Only five people allowed to be inside. You're waiting outside there, and sometimes you're waiting 15, 20 minutes just to go into the to buy some fruits. That period of time can be used to learning from your micro learning content huh? it has to be relevant of course rapid development it makes it so easy for the teacher now instead of designing a full-blown lecture i just choose one aspect of lecture making into micro learning unit it, it can do it very fast it's much cheaper to produce because uh it, it can be done um, very fast and and you're focusing not on everything just focusing on certain aspects and that's why i want to share with you is that when you design e-learning content if you have a lecture, maybe not everything needs to be audio narrated. Maybe just five minutes of the 40 minutes needs to be audio narrated and explained in depth. So that, that's the part that you actually create with audio narration. The rest you can give to students, they can read and learn. But there's some aspects that you need to explain in terms of words and audio and visuals. And that's the kind of content that you convert into a micro learning unit. Huh? And then learning retention. People remember more when things are shorter, usually when they're chunked and juicy and small, it's more memorable. And how? Well, it can come in form of videos and podcasts in terms of presentations. It could be a presentation slide. Instead of giving 100 slides, you can break it into units also. It can be a five-slide unit or it can be a PDF file. It can be uh, a micro learning. It doesn't have to be content per se. It could be assessment in terms of quizzes, a Kahoot experience of five questions. could be a form of micro learning content. It can come in the form of infographics. It can come in the form of games, gamifying uh, the experience. I already mentioned Kahoot, but it can be a form of the game. There are many other aspects, but these are the most common things of how micro learning can be displayed or experienced. Huh? So that's micro learning. So before I move on, anything else you want to add on micro learning? Oh, all the caps, okay. Okay, Prof. Karim is sharing his nice content. <laughs> Curate the content craft. Anything else you want to add on uh, on micro learning? Anyone here want to add something on micro learning? I'll be more lecture based for this for me to cover because I've been so interactive. Sometimes you be so interactive you forget uh, that you need to cover a certain amount of things also. Okay, Prof. Karim says micro is the way to go. Uh, Marcela, well covered. Okay, so you, at least you got an idea what micro learning is. And the idea is to, to create, you chunk it up, you make it so juicy and so focused. So not only empowers the students, it empowers the students to to learn anyway. Because when it's chunked up in a smaller format, it becomes so learnable. You know, you can, it's only five minutes. I'm waiting for the now, especially now we're waiting. I'm every time I go to the uh, the grocery stop. Also, I, I went to Hero yesterday in Tamantun. I had to wait 30 minutes. You know, so that period of time I could have had maybe gone through five, six micro learning units. Huh? 
So this is uh, very important. So we chunk up content makes it more learning friendly. Okay. 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 Now I'm going to be. But this is if you can take a screenshot. You don't have to do this. Your homework. If you want to have some homework, I was thinking tomorrow what you can do. Uh, your homework. If you have, you can take this if you want. I want you to create a slide, or if you don't want to create. Uh, some of you, as many of you, share the best slide you've ever created that you have designed yourself, not something that you just re reuse. What is the best slide you ever shared and you want to share with If you want to share that tomorrow with us, or you can take this content and transform it into a slide that's visual, simplified, and chunked. Uh, you can take this one, or you can share something, or you can take some of your existing content and chunk it up and design it in a juicy way and say, wow, this is what I've done. Uh, uh, not what you've learned from me, but in general, to well-designed slide, just one slide. That's your challenge for tomorrow if you want to share. If you don't want to share, it's up to you. But tomorrow in the beginning of the first 15 minutes, I want you all guys to share what you've done since yesterday. Or if you have designed an amazing slide that you've done before, you want to share with us and share what's so amazing about it, how you design it and, and how chunked and juicy and, and, and instructionally sound it is. Huh? Okay. Okay. So... Uh, so number five is to provide learning and guidance. I'm just going to skip through a bit fast this now. So semantic coding is basically you want to present the content in different ways to uh, to uh, to, um, and to basically create a aha to understanding. So you can do that through examples, case studies, stories, graphic representation, mnemonics, and so on. Here, etc. So I'm just showing you one example. So if I wanted to teach the nine planets, this is a very simple example. I wanted to teach the nine plan planets in our solar system. I'm not sure eight, nine, ten, and what, what is now. But instead of just saying you memorize this, I uh, this is not my example. I'm just sharing with you a typical example. This is one a good example. If I were to remember my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas, by remembering that sentence, I just re can rewrite, and the first letter of each word becomes an acronym. And by do that, they rep each uh, what do you call it. Uh, Capital letter represents one of the planets: Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So, by me remembering this sentence, I can remember these nine words. And this, by remembering in terms of acronyms and examples, you, instead of taking you say 20 minutes, 15 minutes, you can do this in maybe one minute, two minutes. So, mnemonics is one example. Mind mapping is another example. Okay, we don't have time to go detail, but mind mapping is a very powerful tool for people to remember. When I went to uni in, in, in UIA, Islamic University in Gumbak and Pataling Jaya, I, when I came from Norway, I was only a B student, B minus B student. I just introduced mind mapping and acronyms and I became a dean's list within one semester, one or two semesters. So mind mapping is very powerful to, to organize information and so on. Okay? Or, or you can storify learning. Yeah? So I have my own quote, quoting myself, bullets sticks for exams or stories sticks for life. We remember bullets for exams, but stories, if you can that can be in, in terms of academically is case studies and so on is that they, they are more powerful a lot of times students don't look at case studies they just look at the slides and memorize them but actually if they can connect it with stories and case studies it becomes more memorable for the long term and more learning friendly and then we have activities and feedback okay uh, i'm keeping away this attention huh? this this please don't ever use these things because huh? these things have been proven a myth huh? but i think what is powerful is teaching others encouraging students to teach others teaching others is one of the most powerful probably the most powerful thing to learn something. And then we have practice by doing and so on. So these are ways to engage the students. And then assessment, uh, we will skip this. But these are some of the variety of methods that you can use. I think rubrics is widely used in higher education, especially in medical education. E-portfolio is, to me, is the most important method to assess today, e-portfolio. Why is e-portfolio important? Because now we, we're living in the era of innovation, uh, uh, invention and creation and automation and robotics and so on. So we. People want to know what students have done, what they have created, what they have designed. So they, you're not going to see that through quizzes and exam results. You're going to see what they've done. So that's why it's very important for students to start establishing the e-portfolio. Even academics have their own e-portfolio. And we should encourage students to start building the e-portfolio based on the projects and assignments. So e-portfolio is very central. This is what people want to see in the corporate world. They want to see what the students have done, not what they've memorized. Huh? And peer assessment, of course, is very powerful. And learning analytics to help you understand whether the student is doing well and so on. Okay, and number nine is to enhance your attention time. Of course, you need to, in your presenting to summarize, recap, and so on, provide additional resources. And then links, very important to provide links to all the resources, okay? So this slide, uh, why don't you take a picture of this slide? This slide is very good, because it summarizes everything. 
So this is so after the but don't worry, just take a screenshot of this one and keep it. Huh? Please take a screenshot of this one. This summarizes Gangnes nine events of instruction. Uh, again, gain attention, inform learning outcomes, stimulate recall and prior knowledge, present new content. These are examples on activities. Provide guidance, provide learning activities, provide feedback, provide assessment, enhance retention. Now, remember, these things do not need to be in order. The only thing that needs to be in order first is gain attention and, and perhaps learning. The other ones can, it's up to you. Of course, stimulate recall, prior knowledge is good to do before. But this aspect, like feedback and activities, can come out throughout. It doesn't have to be number six, it can be throughout. Huh? And then you have to number nine, of course, will be you summarize and keep. So this is this slide is very important. So please take a screen. I can share with you later, no problem. But this slide is the most important of all this. And it has some ways of doing. These are just some examples of how you can implement. So if you look in terms of presentation, this is the introduction, number one, two, three. This is the con real content they're presenting, and this is the assessment, and this is the summary. So it's like a common presentation. Gangnam's nine event instructions has been presented that way. Okay. Okay, so before we move on, I know this is very intensive, but what is the, anything else you want to know about Gangnes nine events of instruction, how that can help you to design better content, better lectures, better tutorials, better talks, anything else you want to add to Gangnes nine events, or maybe it's something you want to share before we move on. Huh? This is very intensive. <laughs> okay. Okay, Jerry Chong says, must be in sequence, uh, question mark. No, it does not have to be in sequence. As I said, I think the attention grab should come first. Learning outcomes, sometimes you don't need to present in your content. It could be something that you present elsewhere. But the most important is students are aware of the learning outcomes and they try to use it as a learning tool. But of course, if you want to present the, in the content, it should come usually after attention. And then uh, re prior recall, if it's relevant, but then content. But I think activities can come out throughout the, even in the attention grabber can be, uh, activities and feedback and so on. So that comes throughout. And the recap ending. So no, it doesn't have to come in sequence. Okay, Marcela says inductive and deductive, okay. Uh, Simon says in my discipline law, students always appreciate hearing about experience in legal practice. Okay, great. Jerry Chong says, okay, awesome. Uh, Marcela says, whichever comes first, but to recap. Okay. Okay, to recap, okay. Okay, so in terms of, I'm just going to share some, the mother of all rules, I've studied a lot of, I've read most of the books on TED Talks. because I, I, I was very fascinated with TED Talks, this is 2005, already 15 years ago. I used to watch, when it started, I can't remember 15, no, no. It started in 2005, I can't remember. When it started showing on YouTube, I think one of the first years already, I was watching TED Talks. But mother of all rules in, in design, huh, they used to say one message per slide. Okay, That does not mean one bullet per slide, huh? it means one message. So if I, I'm talking about two theories, don't put two theories in the slide unless you're comparing them. You have, each slide will have a, the theory will be in each slide, okay? So the, but of course, if you're comparing, you have to have a, a table and so on. But in other words, one message per slide. But this is the mother of rules. Another one, you can see here, this is Steve Jobs' example. Steve Jobs says, boom, look at the way. Uh, the moment you see the slide, you already know, iPhone. I could put, a, so this is a good example. I just, I really like this one. <laughs> Simple. Just one word. So if you're talking about knowledge management, knowledge management, you know, even if you can visualize that, it's just boom. That, that's how you start. Okay, don't know. okay. So even before you do your, tomorrow we talk about PowerPoint, uh, it's a good idea to not start in PowerPoint or tools. Use sticky notes, maybe a, a mind mapping software, or, uh, you know, capture the outline of your content first elsewhere. Because when you go into PowerPoint, you're gonna waste time and starting doing the beautification of your presentation. But most important is to extract what is important, the skeleton first, then go into PowerPoint, okay? And you might have a tool books of resources, diagrams, you really have a separate place where you have all your visuals. So even before you do PowerPoint, it's good to, I, I learned my hard lesson, I used to always start in PowerPoint, but when you start in PowerPoint, you start wasting time on beautification and so on. The problem with that is, sometimes you beautify a slide, you spend two hours, designing this beautiful slide, and then after you finish the slide, you realize, I don't need this slide. See, in other words, you wasted two hours designing a slide, which is not relevant to your presentation. So always get that outline first, the most important stuff, then you focus on the beautification and attraction and so on. Huh? So keep this in mind. I've done that so many times before I design a beautiful slide, then I realize I don't need it. <laughs> and the magical flow, the they call it the three, the number three is over. If you talk about TED Talks, they always recommend have three core items. This is not applicable for academics, but just I'm just sharing with you because sometimes it's very difficult. Uh, but this is like a good opening. If you have a star moment in the opening, attention grabber, 
Star moment stands for something they, they'll they always remember. Key message, the key message comes that is usually the, 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 the learning outcome or the main key message comes out. What do you want them to learn? And then the overview. And then the body is the main ideas, evidence. If we're talking about if you're doing a presenting a paper and then supporting ideas. And then you close it with the recap and you repeat the key message. That's why it's very important repetition. We talk about repetition point. Whatever you want the students to remember, Remember, that should be repeated several times during your presentation. Make sure it's, it's hammered into them. This is so important. Okay? And then if it's if you're like TED Talk, you call to action. Let's change the world and blah, blah, blah. But that might not be applicable to academics in the lecture. And of course, you have the Q&A. TED Talks never have Q&A, which is very interesting. But they, they do have it in uh, normal learning process. You have Q&A. TED Talks have no Q&A. They're just presenting. And that's it. We watch the and We look at the comments in the video. Okay? So keep in mind, crapper. I'm just going to go through this quick, and then we're going to have a discussion. Crap. This is. A, I found this. I drew this, but I didn't invent this. Crap is somebody's called it. I like this because you can just remember. My, this might be my star moment in my presentation. At the end of this presentation, you're going to remember. What do you remember from this presentation? Crap. <laughs> so crap stands for contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. So when you design, uh, you need to have a lot of contrast, a lot of repetition. It should be aligned and it should have proximity when you're learning something. We're going to look at quickly that. Contrast. Okay. Uh, contrast can come in terms of size, can, can come in terms of shape, in terms of color, position, and orientation. Okay. Background is very important. Huh? You can see the difference. Okay. And if students are printing out your content, if students are, let me repeat, if students are printing out your content, always try to make sure your content is. white background because when they print or light background because if you have black background if students print out your slides uh, they're going to waste a lot of ink a lot of ink is going to be wasted on printing out in front of the environment and so on it's also waste but also money is to waste so always if, if you know your students are printing out your content keep it white as the best because that use less printing in terms of the color and so on printing okay but you can see the difference huh? you want to have contrast is so important huh, when you do so Avoid busy templates. Eh? You don't want to have some people have these weird templates and you can't even read what's there. Okay. And size does matter. When you want to emphasize something, uh, what comes out here, you can see yes comes out here. But if you wanted this to come out, make it stand out. Okay. Make it stand out. This is what matters. Size matters when you want to present. Eh? Repetition. Repetition, you have to think about font, you have to think about size, you have to think about shape, you have to think about color layout. You want to have consistent design. One of the biggest challenges with academics today is that they like to copy, I mean, we all do, we copy paste from multiple articles, have different font types, and they don't change it. So when they present, you see one slide got Times Roman, one slide got this, one slide got Arial, one slide got Badana. It looks so unprofessional. So if you want, in your slides, you have to be consistent in your fonts, unless it's in the graphic, it's different. But in your presentation, usually maximum you have two fonts. One is for your header, and one font type maybe for the text. But don't have too many font types. Huh? And, and work on the size is also very important. Huh? So what type of font type you should use is a little debate. But usually for uh, e-learning, sans serif is best. For printing, people say serif. Interestingly, I did some research. Serif is good for printing, but for... Uh, so what is sans serif? Okay, this is important. So uh, we talk about uh, serif. You look at serif again. Serif is edges. Huh? Serif is a lot of edges. Sans serif is... Increase readability. So they have Verdana, Impact, Arial, and Calibri. These are most common. I'm using Calibri. It's up to you. But these are usually the most readable fonts when you do online education. Eh? Okay, we'll talk about this tomorrow. Slide Master. Alignment. Content should be aligned. Okay. So here an examples are just text. Eh? Left alignment gives you a design more sophisticated look. Centering is just cheesy and should be. This, I didn't come up with this. I adapted from here. Uh, Centering is just cheesy and should be used mostly for headlines and eh? headlines. Eh? Online alignment takes personal. So usually left alignment or justified is mostly used in, in, in presentations. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is just some tips. But this is generic. You might have different opinion. That's fine. But this is generic. Eh? And in terms of pictures, there's something you, if you have never heard of. It's called the rule of thirds. Eh? So where do people... I wish I could discuss this with you, but because of time, we can't. So people, when they look at this screen here, uh, these, these nine boxes, where do they look first? Based on research, uh, these are the most common places where they look. Because of our eyes, we have two eyes. Most people look to the left where first look. 41% usually look here. 
first. So if you want to present important information, sometimes if you use the rule of thirds to keep in mind, it's a good idea to keep things, the most important things on the left side, upper side. Eh? But they all, these are the four A's where they look most commonly. Eh? Okay. So I just did this logo. This team is horrible this year, but if you like basketball, they're the top team. Eh? So you can see the logo designer, eh? the rule of thirds, they're actually applying the rule of thirds here. The most central thing in the, in the logo is on the left side, upper. Eh? Okay, proximity. Very important. Labeling. When you label content, I just want to show you an example. Eh? Labeling is very important. Uh, I could ask you here, what when you put a label to something, eh, it's very important to, I'm using cartoons here, when the label is closer to the item you wanted, people in the brain connect it much easier. So labeling is very important. Okay. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop now. And tomorrow we're going to cover Creative Commons. I want Because I want to have a discussion, the last five to 10 minutes, I want to discuss with you. I went very fast. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to push tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about also copyright. The first 10 minutes talk about copyright and creative commons. But today I want to stop uh, my thing. I want to stop because I'm not sure everyone will be coming tomorrow. So for the next 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes, we will discuss, we will recap what has been learned. I'm going to recap quickly. We have talked about learning. We talk about design. We talk about instruction design. We, we have introduced you to Gangnis uh, nine events of instruction. We have looked at just quickly at some presentation tools, video animation tools, and engagement tools. And also, finally, we looked at something called crap, uh, contrast, repetition, and so on. So that's what we covered. So now it's up to you. I want you to ask me any questions up to you for the next. You know, okay, we're gonna have one activity more. Sorry, we're gonna have one more activity. And uh, let me just go. So while we while you ask me a question, I'm going to give you the last activity for today. This is you. Huh? We're going to use Slido again. I want you to go to Slido. You go here again. Go to the same thing. Let me just, uh, while they're doing that. Okay, I'm going to go here. Okay, I'm going to ask you this. Okay, I'm going to go. So please go, keep on going here. I want you to go there. And I want you to tell me what is the most important thing you learned today. What is the most important thing you to do? You go to Slido, and I want you to write what is the most important thing that you learned today, the most important lesson you learned today, and and then you can keep on asking me questions also. But I want to know what is the most important for the next, last two hours. You've been listening to me, uh, and I've been discussing with you. What is the most important lesson you have learned today? So please share that in the Slido, and I'm going to change my view to Slido view. At the same time, in the for those at University of Malaya, please ask questions in the in the chat box okay anything what we learned today and tomorrow i will co cover copyright and creative commons eh? okay so please go to, i'm going to go to slido now let me just uh unselect eh? we'll talk about copyright tomorrow okay? I, I i do not want to cover that today because we need that's so important i don't want you you're probably quite exhausted so i'm going to now what i'm going to do is hey eh, sorry i'm going to stop presenting and i'm going to go to my slido eh? Okay, we go, we go. This one thing I find very funny. Huh? I need to present again. Huh? So let's go to Slido. Okay, I'm going to go here. Okay, sure. It's okay. Hopefully you'll see now. Okay. So do you see? Can I get a call? Do you see what I'm seeing? I see a word cloud of what is the most important lesson you learned today. <laughs> Masira. Positive crap. <laughs> yes, can see. Okay. So we're looking at a word cloud. Okay. So what are the most important lessons you've learned today? I made in the word cloud. Okay. But please ask questions in the forum. Uh, so okay. The most important lesson today we see Gangnis nine events that has been our main focus. Lesson action. Uh, presentation ranging action mapping. Nine huh? with Gangnis nine events instruction. I'm wondering if you can change your word cloud into. Uh, Maybe you can copy paste your thing into the chat box also, so we can see in full term sentence. I'm not sure whether you can see that in in the word cloud. Huh? Can, can you just post your what you've learned also in your chat box for those who have access to it? For those who are not access, okay. Okay. Can you post in the chat box also what you have learned? Because now we're looking at it from a word cloud point of view. Action mapping, okay. Uh, Mangai Raju, the most important thing she learned was action mapping. Rabe Arasak break presentation into chunking, okay? So, Raza, you need to, Dr. Raza, need to focus on chunking. Keep it to the point, action pack, okay? Student gain is all about structure and flow, okay? Very good. Uh, Chong, uh, Abdul Karim, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. That's one of your famous statements, okay? <laughs> action mapping, Gangnia, uh, careful structuring of lessons by Simon, huh? Ilhami says, micro-learning. 
One point per slide, okay? Not one point, huh? one message. Kai, you, huh? not one point, huh? you can have many points, but one message, <laughs> okay? Sham Samir, micro learning, okay? Motham, simplicity. Intan Suhana, engagement, okay? Shwazila, simplify, simplify, simplify. Hariyate, uh, Hariyanti Azura, action mapping. Jerry Chong, keep, keep it simple, huh? short and simple. Huh? Uh, I didn't cover that, but that's a good point, uh, Jerry Chong. Uh, Al al ola pin ola pin and presentation flow okay uh, loon leak alien micro learning okay simple and clear uh? uh, ola pin okay action map so you can see let's go back to the we can see here our our word cloud is coming in along uh, in terms of word cloud so so in terms of star it seems to Gangnes has been impacted most action mapping uh, and to your presentation. So before we, while we're moving into the last two few minutes, I'd like to finish on time. Actually, time is up already. We can go another five minutes. We started five minutes late. So, so important lessons here is, so any questions, okay? Any questions that you want to ask? Okay. Uh, Shah Haz, Hazlia said, I like learning guidance, okay? Uh, Ompar, Umpar Kash. Panwar, Panwar, micro learning holistically. Okay, great. Okay, what else? So, but so in other words, when we use the webinar, if you're using webinar, uh, one of the challenges you're going to have using webinar or doing webinar is how do you know? Let me ask you a question. How do you know the students are engaged when you're doing a webinar? How do you know? And how do you know your students are actually attending mentally? They might be, you can see them on the camera, they look like they're following you but they're actually hoping another tab and watching a Chinese or a, a Korean or a, maybe a Hindustan movie, or maybe having fun chatting with a friend, but you think they're following you. How do you know that your students are mentally engaged in your webinar? Anybody want to share? How do you challenge, because this is one of the biggest challenges you're gonna have. You might be, you think you're talking to them, but you're talking to yourself and everyone else is just there, but they're not really there. <laughs> okay, polls, okay. Ask questions, okay? So uh, Raju says, ask questions. Shazila says, ask question polls, okay? Use features like Slido, okay, great. Chat and response, okay? So, uh, Olan Rile, or Ola Upin, uh, chat in response. Uh, Li Ang, Ang, Li Luan, by allowing them to participate activities, okay, like polls, okay? Use raised hand function. There's no hand function here, but yes, use the raise, raise your hand function if it's here. <laughs> Quiz, okay, but I, I'll share with you a very easy trick. If you if you if you have no skills in online learning, you just know how to switch on your webinar and run your PowerPoint slide and just see the chat box. One of the easiest way to get everyone engaged and give them they get scared not to be there is to look at because you have all the names there in the chat box. You just ask them by name. Say, Raju, what do you think? Huh? Tamara, what do you think? Uh, she said, say something absorbed and see if they react. True. Simon, what do you think? So when you start randomly asking names there, if people actually listen, oh my God, I better follow because he might ask me a question. And <laughs> so just ask them, ask them directly, just like you would do in class, randomly ask people so then to know whether they're engaged or not, whether they're there. Because if they don't reply, they're obviously not there or they're having problem with internet, right? So Jerry Chong, my exit ticket is always, everyone ask one question in the chat room, okay? That's good, you have an exit. Uh, but that doesn't make sure they're there. They might ask a question, but they're not, they're not there throughout the whole webinar, okay? Using use the random name name picker. Okay, you have tools for that. Yeah. But that means you, I'm I'm talking. If you're a beginner, you don't have time to use another tool. Uh, if they had a random pick in Google Meet, it would be good. Uh, Shazila, good idea. So just just sometimes, and I remember what was the rule I'd share with you. What was how long was uh, uh, what's his name again? John Medina. He had a rule. What was it? How many minutes was it? <laughs> Ten, right? So, but I think online should be every five. I think to me, five is a magic number. You notice, I would not talk for more than four or five minutes, maybe it was one period, and I'll just engage you again. Because if I don't, you might get kind of bored. You know, And I think that's one of the mistakes I, I've seen uh, people do in webinars is that they find it so interesting to talk and listen to their own voice. They go on talking, talking, and they think it's great, but actually people are not there. It's like going to a coffee shop when you go to the warong, right? If you talk all the time, do you think people are going to be attentive and engaged? No, you have to give people a chance. 
you know it, but it's a bit messy i like the chat because if i give you the video it'll take a few seconds for people to get the audio right so sometimes just in the chat box is enough you know because the video thing can get quite annoying if you have like 10 people then oh your mic is not muted so you you, you, you get you lose the momentum huh? uh, so the recording will be available in youtube yes okay so jerry chong wheel of names yeah that's a good chain for random name pick or great Okay, so thanks for sharing. It's good that you're sharing. So I'm done, actually. So if you don't have any questions, uh, let's just look at our, uh, okay, simplicity. <laughs> so the person, so simplicity has become the most powerful. Gangni has lost his power. So the most important lesson today, the, based on the word cloud, is simplicity. Uh, and then Gangni's nine and presentation and action mapping. So uh, crap did not stand out. Huh? So crap was not mentioned. So crap was not the most sophisticated that was not my star i thought my star moment would be crap it was not so the star moment seemed to be the star concept or term was simplicity keep it simple eh? or kiss keep it short and simple okay so dr amira you want to say something is she still there maybe she's not here <laughs> no, no, i'm still here <laughs> okay so you want to say something dr amira maybe you want to yeah, well, why what, what don't you wrap up first, uh, and then I'll just give some housekeeping um, messages. I just wrapped up. You won't. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. Okay, let me just wrap up in, in less than one minute. Okay. Basically, today, we looked at the, the design. Uh, uh, we looked at the sim. I tried to. Uh, okay, no wonder simplicity. My topic is called simplified. <laughs> so, but I tried to focus on the core, which is design. We looked at. The basic of learnings, how the brain learns a bit by looking at John Medina's 10 rules of learning, brain learning, and we looked at the 10 minute rule. Uh, but as I said, online is a bit different. I think four to five minutes, you should engage your participants some way every four to five minutes. And then we looked at design, we looked at Gangne's nine events of instruction. Uh, we looked a bit at Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and how we looked at one message per, per slide. And then we looked at, uh, we looked at uh, crap. And then, so that's basically we covered design. We were supposed to cover copyright, but we'll do that tomorrow, copyright and creative comments. But now I'm, I want to ask you, I'm not even going to recap it, what was your homework? Can you remember what the homework I gave to you or not? Because <laughs> I gave it orally. I didn't give it through a visual. Can you remember your homework or not? <laughs> we still got 82 here. <laughs> Can anybody say what was your homework again? <laughs> or do I have to repeat that? Does anybody can remember the, your homework? What was your homework for tomorrow? <laughs> Make a slide or share a slide, an awesome slide, right? The best slide you ever created. That'll be very nice. And then share to you why you think it's so special, how it's been simplified, how it's been visualized. Uh, if you can do that tomorrow, that'll be homework. Okay, Prof. Kaimi, just choose a slide that you created or create a slide from your own content. And if you can transfer bullet pointed slide, it'll be very nice. And I, I, I can give you feedback. I'll give you constructive feedback. I'll start with the positive and then I will slam you and then I'll end with positive which is the sandwich technique of <laughs> uh, okay Dr. Amira you want to say something but I also want to say thank you very much UMM for being you've been awesome participants maybe you give a clap for yourself awesome awesomeness and uh, we all were very good participants and if I'm done anything wrong inshallah I've not hurt anyone I would like to thank Dr. Amira for being such an ex exceptional host and uh, as Azrul, Azrul for being there. I don't know where he is, but he's somewhere there. He's here somewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's it. Huh? So I'll see you tomorrow if you're coming tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be really going into PowerPoint, looking at that tool, and we will still talk about design. We'll look at copyright and creative commons. And I'm done. I think my two hours and two minutes is gone or something like that. I mean, active time. Yeah. That's so anything? So thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Zaitwe. So we will look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. So for... yeah, okay. I have some links here. Uh, I'll just share the. the uh, I didn't. So just uh, okay. I share that. Okay, I, I see some links here. BM Suju. <laughs> Maybe one. BM Suju. Yeah. My YouTube channel. No, oh, that's on Facebook. You have to go to all oh, my Facebook. Uh, BM Suju. Request that you speak BM Suju before we say goodbye. Oh, assalamualaikum. Bagaimana? <laughs> malu lah, saya malu. <laughs> Tapi insyaAllah, um, I don't know how to speak in design because I haven't, I have to prepare, like I, I'm preparing, going to prepare on how to, to speak teaching design. Huh? But I think I, I've done on micro learning, but I think the most important, uh, muhim, uh, penting, uh, penting, uh, uh, 
Belum cuba, belum tahu. Uh, this is advertisement. Remember advertisement? Belum cuba, belum tahu. Okay, so belum cuba, cuba ta- jangan tak- takut cuba. Cuba, okay. cuba, cuba. Selepas cuba cakap. Jangan cakap sebelum cuba. Uh, cuba Orang suka cakap, cakap, cakap. Or, or what, what's the word to complain again? In Malay, complain? What's that word? <laughs> Not bergaduh, I know bergaduh is quarrel but Jangan complain, complain, complain eh. Cuba Selama cuba cakap Orang suka cakap tak cuba ah, Cuba, cuba So belum cuba, belum tahu ah, Okay <laughs> Okay, I think that's enough You can see me, I talk Malay from, from, from this. Hello sir Jed Yes, okay, we have one here okay. Hello Yeah, hello uh, Hello Hello sir Hello, yes Jed sir Ha, Dr. Amul Udal from uh, Mumbai, uh, India. Oh, Mashallah. Okay, welcome, welcome. Yes. Yes. So it was a very nice presentation. I thoroughly uh, too much enjoyed, and it was a very informative session. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you very much. I'm uh, really thankful to you. I'm really thankful to you. Uh, please kindly share uh, our pre- uh, previous uh, webinar or post. Okay, uh, I have uh, in your YouTube, uh, in your YouTube uh, link. Also. Okay, but so it will be for me as well as my students. Also. Okay, I have a group in Facebook which is interested. I, I've had a few webinars there that's using Facebook Live. I share the link in the chat box. Uh, maybe I can share. It, uh, okay. uh, let me stop sharing. Eh? I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, wait, wait. Uh, Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, Can you hear me? Hi, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I, I've done a yes, few. Yes, I've done a few web, free mm-hmm. webinars already in the, uh, in the, in the. I put the link already in the chat box. Can, can everyone see the chat box or not? Or is that only available to you, you know, Sulaya? No, the chat box is only available to those who entered. The, okay, uh, okay. Let me just uh, okay. Let me just share again. I'll, I'll create a slide. Wait, I'll just. I, think you might I have a slide. On yeah, I have a slide here. Wait, I have a slide. Let me just share. I'll share again. Uh, let me just share. Uh, I have a. I'll I'll do a few slides. Wait. Okay. I, I can. Can you uh, mute uh, the uh, Doctor Amol? Can you please mute your your thing? Cause uh, it, it helped not on the noise part. Just okay. Present a window. Okay. So here are a few things. Let me just share. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to go there. Okay. Okay. This is like a. Okay, I want to show you this. This is what I want to show you. Uh, let's go here. Okay, here. Why does it go there? I don't understand. When it goes to PowerPoint, it goes. To... Okay. Let's just not see it in full screen. Let's just see it. It's okay. This one here. Okay, can you see here? Uh, uh, Dr. Amir, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Sure. So, yeah, okay. So this this group here, I have done already two webinars. I actually done this topic, but not as in depth. But I've done this topic already. There's webinars in this. If you go to this Facebook group, you probably have to scroll a bit. But there's webinars on this and digital drawing. Already there's some webinars. Huh? You can go to this one. Uh, I, if you want to see me, BM Suju. I don't have the URL in my game. But you, you go there, you'll find it there. Uh, and then you have, if you want to see my drawings, I've been drawing since 2016. Uh, you can go to my Instagram. I've actually, that's the tool I use to compile all my drawings that I published since 2016. So I use Instagram as my e-portfolio of my drawings. I like to draw knowledge. There's a lot of interesting things there. And if you want to uh, take a screenshot of this or something, we can share the link in the, but you don't have the full group, okay? And then the another one is the YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, but I, I'm not using so much YouTube. But I have uh, for tomorrow, I will share. There's a URL on. I have five videos on how to design uh, using PowerPoint, how to to record using PowerPoint, how to export using PowerPoint, and so on. It's in the YouTube channel. So those are the three things that I probably want to share with you today. That's useful, which is relevant to this um, this uh, webinar. Is that okay? Okay, I already shared the links. I can share the links again. Uh, let me just, I can I can put it in here also. Let me just, uh, if, uh, sorry. Ah, okay. That's it. 
So, uh, if you want the links here, yeah. but these links are, uh, I, I will share. I will share with them. I will share them online. I will share them in the Facebook also, in the Facebook group. Uh, these are the links. Yeah, I already shared them in the group uh, discussion in the Google Meet. So these are things that you can go. Even I have five PowerPoint tutorials, which is very relevant for tomorrow. So even if, if I, you don't understand what I'm saying tomorrow, there's videos that you can watch relevant to tomorrow. OK, we still have 64 people. People don't want to go back or something. <laughs> so what else? Uh, what else do we have here now? Uh, OK. But I want to think, I think Prof Karim, you were here the whole time. I'm very happy for you. You're so busy, man. So I'm very, that gives me encouragement. I must have done pretty good today because the fact that you stick around for so long, very good. But thank you. But you're doing a session here anyway, so it's good for you to be here. Uh, so OK, so you've been, yeah. Uh, okay. Hello, Ali sir. Hello, yeah. Yes. Sir, uh, Dr. Amun, sir. Uh, okay. I'm sending my email ID, so please uh, send me uh, the details about uh, uh, your Facebook page and all uh, okay. through email. Through okay. email? Who uses email now? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, yes, I, <laughs> actually, actually what that? happened, uh, your slide is not visible on uh, mobile. I'm using mobile phone. So oh okay. My, okay, uh, sure, sure, sure. Capture, uh, okay, sure. Okay, so sure. Do you I do you know? Uh, do you know Prof Ramesh? Yes. Uh, yes do you yes, know? Prof yes, okay, I, I will. Sh I will yes, share with Prof. Uh, Is I will share with Prof Ramesh, and he can. I'm sure he will share with you. He's, I think you got it through Prof Ramesh, okay, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's great. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, say hi to him. Hi Ramesh to him for me. <laughs> yes. 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 Sure. 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 He's my good friend. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I really appreciate your feedback. Thank you for being here. I took up your precious time also. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Dr. Mia, you want you want me to stop sharing or? Uh, uh it's okay. I'll uh, if you are okay, I will take over the presentation and then we can wrap up and meet again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Please take over. Okay. You want me to okay. mute or you want me to be here still? Uh, you. It, I think you can mute, uh, but do stay on if you want to. Um, I'm just going to wrap up really quickly. So I just wanted to thank to thank you, actually, Zaid, and also everyone, uh, Prof Karim and all of the other participants. I think like you're super, super, super active. So that's really great. So let's meet up again tomorrow on the same link uh, for the second part of uh, Mr. Zaid's webinar. And before that, uh, before you actually leave the call, can I just get those of you who are still here to look at the power um, the slide that I'm going to be sharing shortly? That's a QR code for you to submit your feedback on today's uh, webinar. You can scan it and you can also look at the link and maybe copy it. So I'm sharing my slide just very shortly. Yeah. Uh, can I request anyone who's still here? We're leaving, but uh, if anyone is still here to please mute your mic. Okay, so I think I'm sharing my presentation now, just a slide. So thank you again to everyone and uh, hope to see you again tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day. Hello. Hi, Dr. Mina. Hi. Oh, hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking that uh, maybe what we do tomorrow is we share this code in the beginning of the presentation. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's cool. I've never uh, done yeah, that yet, right, but that's yeah. a good idea. You're right. Yeah, so we just do it. And then we do it at the end also, but we do it at the beginning just to make yeah. sure because you know, people come and go. This is the thing. You know? So I want to get the feedback from the negative people. So I mean, the one that hate my guts. <laughs> so those are the one. Those are be in the beginning. Might not be in the end. <laughs> Just kidding. So, but anyway, thanks, thanks. Thank you very much again for being here. And I'll leave it to you. I'm, I'm going to make a move now. Uh, where we have somebody very active on the video here. I'm not sure. I can see somebody active here. Okay. Uh, do you have anything to? Anybody else wants to say something? Do you want to have some? Maybe some people eager to say something. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, and I wish you the best. And hopefully, inshallah, you have a bit idea on design. And tomorrow, we get into development and see what we can do with our PowerPoint, which is a, a tool I've been using for I don't know, maybe twenty years. But there's always better ways to do it. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, everyone. All the best. Should I should I kick myself out, uh, Doctor Mira, or what? Um, if you want to, you're free to stay. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. I can. This. <laughs> I, I don't want to. This thing. So how do you end this thing anyway? How do you end Well, okay. So basically, we just simply end this thing by clicking on the red.
phone sign that says leave meeting. Oh, but I know. But you see, normal webinar tools is the, the host. When they click, it's finished. But this one doesn't finish. It just goes on no, until yeah, tomorrow. No, <laughs> it, it just kind of goes on. So I've got to wait for everyone to leave. Uh, and then when when I leave or when Azra leaves, then the webinar would be officially over. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. I, am we can edit stop, on, yeah. I am going to stop uh, streaming now, and also okay. we are going to start recording as well. Okay. I hope you do some post editing. <laughs> uh, okay, Later. but thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All the best, and I'm going to disappear now. I need to get the breather. I need to, to drink some water. <laughs> okay, take care, everyone. All the Tomorrow. best. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.